Some Central Victoria radio stations don't think much of local footy. Some Central Victoria radio stations love local footy. Not some, only one. Bendigo Fresh FM. We do love local footy. Business sponsor Cabbage Patch in Kangaroo Flat has market value all year round to bring you the best fruit and vegetables in Central Victoria. Walk in and take advantage of these specials. Five kilograms of brushed potatoes, three dollars ninety-nine. A pound of strawberries, two dollars forty-nine each. Blue pumpkin, one dollar twenty-nine a kilo, and one kilogram of onions, one dollar sixty-nine each. The Cabbage Patch is always fresh and always delicious, seven days a week. Looking for easier accessibility in the community? Then Sharky Scooters and Mobility keeps your independence. A family-run, locally-owned business in Kangaroo Flat, you can always expect quality from our team that cares. Visit our large showroom to inspect a huge range of products. Mobility scooters, power wheelchairs, walking aids, lift recliner chairs, ceiling and floor hoists. All your home aids need, plus more. For a free trial, go to Bendigo's Fresh FM sponsor, sharkymobility.com. Business sponsor, CBGT Australia offers employment solutions that work for your business. Our group training program connects employers with motivated and hardworking apprentices and trainees so you can get on with business and access incentives. Build your team without the hassle and let CVGT Australia find the right people for you. We'll take care of the legwork and support you every step of the way. If you're looking for the right staff, call us on 132 848 or head to cvgt.com.au. Business sponsor. If you call for calling out for a makeover, call in and say it's a carpet call Bendigo. Call in for carpet. Call in for timber or vinyl flooring. Call in for colour and design ideas. Are you building, renovating or just want the latest in colour and design ideas? Hi, it's Cherie from Carpet Call Bendigo. Our expert staff and I are here to help. See us today at 10 Nolan Street, Bendigo. Call, call, call. Call, call, call Carpet Call. The experts in the trade. Bendigo Business Sponsor. Go, go. Saturday afternoon local football. Only one station. Supporters know, coaches and players know, and you know. It's Bendigo's Fresh FM. Across Central Victoria and online, live local football. Only one station, and you know. It's Bendigo's Fresh FM. Live from the QEO here today in Bendigo. And this season just keeps on bringing the, the weather and the good footing. Can't wait for today, Jockey, at the QEO. The Graham Wright Cup, it's going to be a good big contest. Sandhurst, the Dragons versus the Bloods. And I'd suggest that the Dragons, after looking at them last week, are probably the best side that I've seen that are... Uh, I don't think they've won a game, have they? No, they're zipping two. Zip. Both these clubs are zipping two. Yes, that's right. So we're going to have at least one winner this week, aren't we? Well, if you're zipping three at five o'clock, you're in a little bit of trouble, even though it's only three rounds gone. Yeah, I suppose in this competition, though, it probably depends on who you play early, mid-season and late, because, of course, you could have that. If you're Sandhurst, for instance, you might have a run of all respect to Castlemaine, Kangaroo Fl uh, Flat, Maribara and a couple of those sides. You could have them in a run and all of a sudden be uh, zip and three, and then be, I haven't looked at the draw, but be three and three, for example, couldn't you? So they, they've come up against... Uh, a pretty competitive uh, storm last week, uh, the Dragon. So I don't think internally they'd be that disappointed. Top three sides at the moment, Gisborne Square and Storm. Johnny, that's the problem with getting, if you're zipping three. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't play finals, but can you make top three? I can't see either of those having a big stumble. No. Um, and Unless it's COVID related. Yes, that's right, and we've already had a couple of examples of, of that. Uh, we get to see Eagle Hawk, and they've been interesting because they've been at a, in a position where we've thought they've probably backed away from the, the top two or three, but uh, they're showing it on the scoreboard, so whether or not they can maintain that uh, inf influence from below, I don't think that there are probably any other sides that can really make a difference to that top two or three. If, um, for instance, Sandhurst get beaten today by South Bendigo, 
internally from a Dragons perspective, I think you'd be pretty disappointed because the Bloods have showed that uh, I know they've had injuries and they've had a lot of soft tissue injuries, but uh, they'd have to dish up something something extraordinary compared to what we've seen in the first two rounds. Well, in the first game against Golden Square, South were invisible in the first quarter, then played some pretty fair footy in the second and third quarters to get back right back into the game and then faded in the last quarter. They played, uh, they were in the five for most of the season we had last year, the half season. they would be very disappointed. If I was the coaching staff uh, Horbury at South Bendigo, I would have had a look at Sa uh, Sandhurst during the week and uh, had a look at their game. They've got a, a ruckman, number 44, Hosh Hosking, who we had a good look at last week. He was absolutely unstoppable in the ruck. And I, I read an interesting article on stats in the Bendigo Advertiser during the week that um, the hard ball gets were down for Sandhurst. The only reason that a hard ball did, uh, gets, uh, would have been down, because Hosking was tapping the ball straight to the uh, running players and they had first use of the football all the time. So if you've got possession of the football in the first instance, you don't have to get a hard ball get because you've got the foot football in the first. So when it comes to statistics like that, give a lot of... So what happened to him in the last quarter when Sanders slowed or Storm went up a gear? Storm went, Storm went up a gear and one player who we love, Lachlan Sharp, yep. um, you just cannot... You cannot give him one inch at any time in the game, let alone when a game needs to be won, because he gets up the field, he's fast, and as you know, he can influence a contest without actually having a... a and that's what happened, though. They, they had better use of the football in the last five minutes going forward, and you just had that little bit of an extra with the storm, and they had uh, two big guys down as, uh, there as well. They had Ernst... Oh, it looks like he's going to be a ripping fellow, and Shishka, number one. So it was just probably the uh, probably the weight of numbers in that forward zone. But it probably didn't it didn't flatter the Dragons on the scoreboard last week. I think it blew out to something. Uh, the coaching staff would have been very, very, very pleased with what they saw in the middle with Hosking giving first possession of the football to players like uh, the ones we know and love, um, Lee Coglin, Joel Wharton was getting involved, Rody was getting involved, Noah Walsh, the, uh, the red-headed fellow uh, running through the middle wearing number five, Mattel wearing number eight, they were getting this first hands on the football through the ruck work it's and hilarious. I think that's where they didn't win it but that's where Sandhurst looked super impressive last week. Johnny, my thing about Sandhurst has been <clears throat> they've always had a, at least a very competitive midfield and they've normally mustered together a pretty reliable defence. Who's going to kick the goals from every week? Uh, Especially when Big Bear's not playing. Bear's on a hamstring. Yep. He had no influence on the contest really last week. Uh, he had the opportunity in the uh, first uh, quarter where it was almost like a Nick Revolt moment, you know, when he ran into an open goal in the grand final and got collared from behind. It was almost a, a gimme goal and he, he didn't kick it. Bear had one of those moments early and he, he, he didn't, he didn't exert the influence that we've seen in the past. Um, What's, what, how much of the game did he play? He played the, uh, the majority of the game oh, and, right. and was a little bit of a swing man as we've, we've seen, him, uh, seen him in the past, but um, he certainly was impressive. Blair Holmes, um, just as we know, just the engine in the middle as well, he gave them a lot of, a lot of first use of the football. But up forward, I think they probably need to rely on Sean O'Farrell. He played up there a little bit. He's, he's tall and skinny, he's got the breeding. He's obviously uh, in a family that's well known through uh, Sandhurst circles. But he certainly, uh, it's not on his name that he's getting a game. He's certainly got the ability to take that next level. But if, if you're the Bloods, um, I notice there's three late changes, right? There's uh, Will Keck, uh, Will Allen and Blake Poyser come in. So they've got a little bit of um, uncertainty there. The two Ma boys go out. That's Samuel Ma and Jack Ma and Regan Harvey, who's been giving them a bit of a drive. But I I'm a little bit worried about um, where in the middle that um, they're going to compete with this big fellow, um, Hamish Hos Hosking, in the ruck. Uh, Will Allen, we've seen him play in the ruck a little bit. He's named there. Um, but he's got the job up against him this afternoon. So I think the game is going to be won pretty well in the middle. I mean, you'd probably say Durr, that's where it's mainly won. You know, most most games are won. But, um, yeah, I, the recruitment of Hamish Hoskin, I, I'm really impressed with. Johnny, uh, speaking of Blair Holmes, yes. 
a wonderful milestone today for him. Yeah. He plays his 200th senior game. Yep. All for the one club, the Santos Football Club. Yeah. That is a mighty, mighty effort. Oh, isn't it? And I was heartened to read an article. There's a nice article in the local newspaper, the Bendigo Addy, uh, in the last couple of days. I was heartened to read where he talked about and his family talked about the fact that um, he was throwing big money at certain times, particularly in the last few years, uh, particularly by a coach that used to coach him here, um, and it refused to go because of the love of the club. So I'm, I'm really heartened when I read stories like that. Who was that coach? Prima. Oh. Yeah, Wayne Prima. Right. Yeah, and as you would though. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that's the one no, thing no, to do. No, of course, you would do that. I loved what Holmes also said. He said, "Look, I've got a day job to pay the bills and to pay the mortgage. I yeah. don't play football for the football money." Yeah. What a refreshing attitude. Yeah. I bet there'd be some people if they heard that uh, would wince a little bit, wouldn't they? Um, I don't think genuine purist footballers, particularly or any football fan would actually winch at that. I, I, winch at that. I reckon... Um, so it's just accepted part? I, I go I, with the does best. No, oh, no, sorry. Sorry, I thought you meant the other way. No. I, thought, I think you meant the other way, yeah. I, I thought you meant that uh, there'd be some supporters that would, or people that would say, just take the money and run. At that, that point of your career when you're into your... Career. Most clubs have got some. Now, the one that immediately comes to mind is Jack Geary at Golden Square. Yes. He would have been offered mega money yeah. over the past years to go somewhere else if not to coach just just to play yeah and he's resisted it and stayed at golden square his games tell he must be getting up the guy at castle main that plays in defense johnny walkinson are you talking no about? john oh what johnny watson johnny watson i can't remember that johnny watson never not being at castle main no that's right and there's another one down there dave stevens and that was all oh, let's go back a little bit is there any bigger name than stephen oliver that did that that um, yeah. gave up a, a, an afl career i mean there probably was we know that there's been over the years players that have been able to go elsewhere but um, he comes to mind as well so um it's been ingrained in us we've been watching football a long time we've seen players from we could go through every club and uh, name those type of players. Similarly, we could go through every club and name players that have done the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to a degree, I guess you can't blame them either. They're young, they need some money, they're trying to get put together some, uh, some dough for a house deposit or something like that. I mean, someone offers you 800 bucks a game. Well, the way I look at it, I was never good, good enough. But even if somebody offered you $1,000 a game, right? Um, and there's how many games in a season in our league? There's not even 20. That's 18 games. 18 games. When I say that's only $18,000, you look at the Blair Holmes uh, scenario when you've got a, a decent job. If you're relying on football money to make a living, you're not going to make a living. At some stage, you're going to hit 30 and you're going to be looking for money. If you haven't got a club, you can call home. That's a good point. That's that's just the way I feel about it. And as we speak, both sides are now come onto the field and they are doing their warm-ups. A little bit of overcast, clouds come over, Jock. So, uh, but when it comes to perfect days for football, this is the second time you've been here this year, the third time I've been. Um, every day so far has been perfect. Oh, mate, it's been sensational. Look, there, there won't be any problems with the weather. If you're sitting at home, get out, get out and about, have a breath of fresh air, come down here. It's not cold. Maybe maybe bring a, a light sweater, John. Yeah. Can you say that? A light yeah, sweater? A light, a light sweater. <laughs> a light sweater. A hot pink one from back in the pastel pink. And have a hot dog. Yes. The sausages that South are doing up there are magnificent. And watch some really good footy and maybe wander over and have a look at the netball. Terrific day out. I think it's only 8 or 10 bucks to get in, so yep. come along. We're in the middle of town. Come along and have a look at some great entertainment. Yeah, and as we speak, umpires Dale Caldwell and Paul Smythe are in the middle doing their warm-ups. I went to have a chat to them uh, before the game, Josh, because yep. I'm interested, which I'm sure there are a lot of fans listening now um, would be interested at country footy level, whether this... Uh, uh, demonstra demonstrating with the umpire whether that has filtered down into our league as it does what we saw last night in the AFL and the answer I got is that yeah, in essence yes but um, they've already spoken to the clubs in the umpire practice games we will see umpiring that they will jump on that when the opportunity comes for them to do that opportunity is probably the wrong word but they won't be doing it to the letter of the law that they're doing it in the AFL and uh, not that they criticise the, the, the level of what's going on in the AFL, but they seem to think at this country football level they need to just back off a fraction, which is common sense, which is what they should be doing at the AFL level. Yeah. So the answer to the question is, yes, that rule is definitely in at, at this, this level. I haven't seen it being implemented in the two games that I've done. I uh, 
you probably wouldn't have seen it in Ground One either. Johnny, when I was in primary school at Charlton at St Joseph's, <laughs> Sister Mary, Mother St Dorica was saying to me then, keep your hands to yourself. A good song about that from the 1980s so, as well. You know, there's a message for the players today, isn't it? Keep your hands to yourself. Sure, well, they also said, Michael, keep your hands uh, yeah. to yourself. Uh, who are you going to tip this afternoon, John? I'm going at Sandhurst, and I think pretty comfortably in the end. Sandhurst? Comfortably. Yes. Comfortably. Oh, okay. I did say com comfortably round one. Uh, just what I observed yeah. last week from uh, Sandhurst, and I just feel that even though the Bloods are getting some of their players back, they were wrecked with injury the first couple of weeks. Um, even with some of those players back that are coming back, they uh, th they won't be as fit as what Sandhurst are, and Sandhurst are pretty settled. Uh, Jock, it's uh, I always think that when when the Bloods play the Dragons in this particular game, uh, whatever wherever the team sit, and lately it's been Sanders up near the top and South. Uh, uh, north of that, uh, down near the bottom, as far as the top five and bottom five is concerned, but there's uh, a lot of t a lot of emotion comes into this game as well. How much it affects the players, I don't know, but I think um, the Bloods always try to lift for this challenge. Can you see them uh, lifting enough to beat Sandhurst today? Uh, no, I can't. Thank but you very I'm much. But I'm expecting a terrific. No, it was a good build-up. I should have grabbed it, but I didn't. Yeah, I. I I don't know. I, I've only seen them once in the first game against Golden Square. And their good footy was good, but there wasn't enough of it. And it worries me that uh, w w what's causing these fade outs? Where are they going? We know Caden Antonowicz is a goal kicker and kicks a lot of goals. Does that worry you, though, the South East Coast line? He's got to play so high. Yes. Uh, yes, it does worry me. Um, he's a terrific player, and he's obviously a very selfless player. He's happy to play whatever the team needs him to play. But at the end of the day, if Antonowitz is 65 metres from goal, he's going to kick goals. Blair Holmes, uh, not only playing his 200th game, he's won the toss and he's kicking to the Elvis Presley end of the ground, oh, <laughs> which fantastic. is to the right of your yep. uh, radio at the moment, otherwise known as the City End, John. Yes. But we'll call it the Elvis uh, End. <laughs> <It's today. laughs> no, I, I like that. Uh, yes, he... Um, he is, and he's. Uh, we've discussed. He's been such a good uh, servant. Do you, do you buy into the um, the theory that when a player, a stalwart like that, reaches a milestone, that it affects the play psycho uh, psychologically? No. Or do you not at all? Not at all. Not I don't point? personally. No, no. no look, I'd, yeah, a lot of these things I do, but only for a few minutes. Yes. Only for a few minutes. You know yourself, Johnny. You would have played in in a couple of them. Yeah. Um, someone's milestone, a big day for the club or a big but after the first three or four minutes it's all over you just get on with your business i think my actual recollection of running down or we'll call it a race is that it actually dissipates even before the ball bounces really because once you've done with that hoo-ha and the coach talk about it you then start concentrating on your game and your structures i'll give you a brief uh, summary of that many years ago i was playing for a caliber and i went into the rooms and usually you go into the rooms not much happening i went into the rooms one day and they're all roaring and carrying on and i said what's going on i said well the teammates because I wasn't from um, that that region at all and they said we're playing the midi today we hate them right and I said do we and he said yes we do and I said oh, okay so that they did all the rule and we went out and got beaten by about 20 goals that's why I was playing there John because <laughs> you weren't no really you would have been a good player though I'd imagine no I wasn't a finisher but, I'd imagine but <laughs> well, I might have been <laughs> what did you say he was a finisher, finisher. Yeah, but um, <laughs> what I'm saying is that emotion even though it was in the room with all the excitement it didn't actually get us anywhere <laughs> <laughs> to the ground and unfortunately talent takes over but these two sides uh, have got a lot of talent we're looking forward to a big afternoon of Benigo Major League Football bringing it to you and uh, you know John and uh, the people down the front know what do they know Bendigo is fresh FM. It's all football. Yes, well, it's local, local, football. local football only. So the Bloods and the Dragons. Let's get round three underway. Bendigo is fresh FM. Jock Clark. So it'll be Hamish Hosking, the big fellow that Johnny raved about, to start in the ruck for the Dragons. And he's opposed to Will Allen. Good tap out. First one. Went to Hosking, the big fellow from the Dragons. They get the first uh, opportunity for a possession. It's worked wide to Rody. Rody's hand pass. Good to Alex Wharton. Alex Wharton. Oh, he's put his seam out under the pump. Gets it back. Goes further inboard. Back to Rody. Rody from the wing inside forward 50. Whistle on play. Dragons have got it right on forward 50. And the play with a free kick down there is uh, Kobe Maxted. So, Kobe uh, Maxted, man on mark, stands at 49, to the town end, to the Elvis Presley end. 
I think he's probably just a fraction too far out to uh, make the distance. Let's see how he goes. But geez, he's got a good piece of it. It's going to just fall Oof. short, comes off hands at minor score. So the first one on the board for the Dragons there, one behind the Bloods yet to score. We're a minute into the first here at the QEO. Bloods bring it back into play to the scoreboard pocket. That's okay. Little kick. Oh, another one. That's two kicks, and they're still inside defensive 50. Play of the foot is Hurley. Now he swings it wide, directly across the ground. Wants the ball magnet. Cooper Leon takes the mark. So he's got it. 65 from the goal he's defending. He's had two ripping games to start the season. Cooper Leon passes short. It's good. Then he runs past, collects the hand pass, goes long to half forward. Good kick. Found the teammate. Here come the Bloods. Work back to Hurler. He ran from half back. He's gone long towards full forward. Player down there is taking it as Antonowitz. He stayed home, took the mark on his chest, and strolled in to kick the first goal of the afternoon. Bloods on the board. One straight. The Dragons are one behind. Live score. Thanks to Variety Superstore Strath Village. How did he get out the back there, Antonowitz? No idea. Absolutely no idea. But he had a panic. Yeah, he had, I'm not exaggerating, I reckon 30 metres. Just uh, accepted a chest mark and just ran into that open goal. So good start at the Barnard Street end for the Bloods, wasn't it? Hurler, he ran from half back. He took a possession on defence of 50 and ran all the way. Ran 80 metres to get another possession. So the Bloods... And Leon, uh, Cooper Leon, he's had uh, three possessions already. Bloods are here to play footy. Oh, they are. And um, let's hope it continues through the game. Hosking wins the tap for the Dragons again. He finds Walsh. Walsh, a little bit of a nothing handball, but Rody, uh, he just offered support. He gives up to Horbury. The Bloods take possession. Goes to Leon. Leon by hand gives it to Oscar White. Oscar White goes to half forward. Down to the Barnard Street end. Bloods attacking here. Again, they're 55 out from goal. Can they get another one on the board? What a start it'll be. Uh, receiving one on the end of it was Alexander Smith. Puts it inside forward 50. It's a poor kick. And the Dragons will leave and send it to the outer side. Yeah, it was well done there. Out of defence. Wharton moves it to the wing. Out of side. Dragons there in possession. Long high kick. Inside forward 50. Carried over the top. At the back. Chance for the Dragons. Taken by Zimmer. He's fired at goal on the left foot and he's absolutely missed everything, Johnny. He missed the whole kit and cabertle. So he's, he's put it into Elvis's Cadillac. <laughs> Rocketing start here at the QEO. Zach here now with the footy goes short. They'll just... Um we saw the Bloods with a little bit of tempo footy in round one, so we might find that they do it uh, in this game as well. It's a little bit different to what we've seen other sides. Horbury with the footy. Oh, he's getting in a bit of trouble defensively. Handball over the top. It was neat to Smith. Smith steps around a player by a hand. Oh, they're mucking around with it. It's a now contested ball at 40. Picked up by the Dragons with Palprat. He lost it. Went to the, to the opposition in Horbury. Horbury now to the outer side, and they're away, Bloods. And it comes off hands, and it'll be a ball in 70 out from the Dragons goal. Five point margin, the Bloods lead, four minutes gone first term. So a bit of a nervous start. We've played just on four minutes in the first quarter. This is, of course, the Graham Wright Memorial Cup, a clash between the Sandhurst Dragons and the South Bendigo Bloods. Well, it was taken by Hosking out of the ruck, and he just hand passed it to a teammate who has fired at goal. Put it through for a minor score. So the Dragons go to two behinds, two points. South Bendigo, one straight goal. That is a live score, thanks to Bendigo Bolt Carpets. Torpy of the Bloods goes short. He finds Hare. Hare took a mark and then kicked it long beyond 50. It was a poor kick. Now it's a contested footy. Left half forward. They've got the mum numbers. Hurley goes by hand over the top to Poiser. Poiser goes further afield. They're away here, the Bloods. It'll be a long kick inside forward 50. Oh, oh. At the back of the pack, Antonowitz. Well, he didn't have 30 metres on that occasion. He only had five, but that's enough for a player like that, and he'll line them up directly in front. Well, you'd have you'd, you'd call that an uncontested mark, almost. Oh yeah, wouldn't you? yeah. Just the the Sanders Dragons defender in front of him just went over his head. Oh, I, th I think he got a little bit lost too. You know that feeling, Jock, yes. when um, you know the ball's well, going over your head and you don't know where the forward is. I don't actually, John. I never played in defence. <laughs> so, <laughs> Antonowitz. Now what sort of blokes play in defence? Yeah, Antonowitz. Yeah, good ones. He can't get a game in a forward line. <laughs> Antonowitz now, and he won't make oh. a mistake, and he pops it through for their second. So, good start here by the Bloods. Live score sponsor, Variety Superstore in Strath Village. They'll go to two goals straight 12. They're leading Sandhurst. Two behinds, and we've gone six minutes in the opening term and already I reckon the ball movement from south inside their forward 50 is much better than I've seen when I uh, had a look at them in the first round. Now did I tip this? Oh I might not have. 
Uh, no, you didn't. You <laughs> took early days. Santa's by the length of the straight. Yeah. Early days, yeah. But it is very early days, indeed. So back in the centre, your big mate Hamish Hosking in ruck for the Dragons. Will Allen for the Bloods. Oh, Hosking just takes it, turns, left footer, kicks it 60 metres inside forward 50, but there's a Bloods mark in defence. Oh, short kick, dangerous, might come off. Hare's got it under the pump, he kicks it, went along the ground. Now the south defence is in the, he, uh, in the danger zone. Worked out by McCaig, worked back in the direction of Will Allen, big fellow, got a hand pass, gave it up to his uh, opposing ruckman, Hosking, got through some traffic, then lost the football. Long hand pass back, goes in the direction of Halbury. He's got it for the Bloods, across the ground, gives it to a teammate down there, Daniel Johnston. The Bloods might get out of trouble. They work it towards half-back outer or scoreboard side. Player after it down there, taking it's Andy Van Heumann. He goes in board with a little kick's OK. Gee, that, that's about seven possessions, Johnny, and they're still inside defensive 50. And that's what worries me about South's back half. Aubrey goes to the wing. He spots up a player. The footy is with Hall. Now Hall. It's an ugly kick. It'll go shallow inside forward 50. Oh, contested ball. Furness swoops on it for the Dragons. They need to be careful. Wilkinson goes on hands and knees. Weight of numbers with the Bloods. A hurried uh, ball out to the boundary line. McLean, that's Jake, did a bit of work. They'll share it around. A chain of handballs ends up on the receiver. One uh, kick is Joel Wharton. And on right halfback, he's got the mark. So Skinny comes into the game. Little left foot pass is OK. Gives it to uh, Lethal Lee Coglin on the wing. Waste no time. Plays on. Finds support. Down the wing. Grandstand side. Long kick up to half forward for the Dragons. Up they go. Nobody could take the mark. Crummers come in. Can they get it out? They can't. Pack develops umpire. Will ball it up. Just on forward 54. Sandhurst. They're yet to kick a goal. They're two behinds. The Bloods have kicked two straight majors. Seven and a half gone first quarter. So it'll be the Dragons, picked up by uh, Mattel. He goes inside forward 50. We're 35 out from goal. Good work, Max did. He did some hard work. It's uh, just uh, tied up a heap of players in there. Also, the coach, Horby, getting involved for the Bloods. In the forward zone now for the Dragons. The Dragons are screaming for a free kick. They won't get one. Throw a blanket over a number of players at ground level. will have a ball up. Ten-point margin. The Bloods lead. Eight minutes gone, first term. Bottom of the pack there was Blair Holmes, the uh, 200 gamer from the ball up. Hosking the big fella took it. His kick was smothered. Bloods hurriedly get a high kick. Outside defence of 50, but it looks to be all Dragons there. They pick it up. It's swept wide by Mattel again. Finds a teammate. Oh, his kick smothered. Bounces back towards the wing on the grandstand side. Now an opportunity for the Bloods. Can they keep it in? They can't. And the ball's worked over the line and out of bounds. Good pressure from both sides. It'll be thrown back into play. Grandstand side right on the wing. Bloods two straight. Sandhurst two behinds. So the umpire will throw it in. Perfect conditions. Ten point margin. Bloods good start here at the QEO. It's a shallow throw in so both Ruckman couldn't get to it. Shark by Joel Wharton of the Dragons. Bangs it on the left quickly to half forward looking for Montague. Back of the pack the ball rolls and goes out of bounds. And 70 out from goal will have a ball in. So ten point margin. Bloods up. Leading this game, nine minutes gone, opening term. Well, we've had this year of inside 50s, the Dragons, but they haven't put a uh, goal on the board yet. So I think South have been inside three times and they've kicked two goals. So they're making more use of their opportunities. There's the ooh, high throw in. Grabbed again by the big blaze. Hosking, you're right, he's dominating. Got it out to Lee Coughlin. He was swamped, but he got rid of the football. South player took it, wrapped up in a tackle. That was McCaig. Got rid of it. It's 30 out from the Dragons' goal. Umpire comes in and will ball it up. So a ball up. 30 metres out from the Dragons' goal. 10 minutes gone. First quarter. The Groom Wright Memorial Cup match here at the Queen Elizabeth Oval. Ball up. Taken by uh, Skinny Wharton. He's thrown to the ground, probably wouldn't take much. And the umpire comes in and will ball it up again. Still about the same spot, about 30 metres out from the Dragons' goal. Horbury, uh, good too this afternoon in the earliest parts of this contest. Shark by the Dragons, Paul Pratt lurking in the forward zone. Contested. Oh, won the ball was Miller. Bit of a blind turn, but a whistle on play. It might come back. And it's going to go the Dragons' way, is it? Yeah. Free kick. I was watching the ball, so I didn't see what it was for. But James Mattel Mittel will get a free kick. And pretty much directly in front, only 35 out. I reckon he might have been grabbed high, Johnny, in that pack, in that in that um, congested passage of play. 
Well, you identified early, Jock, um, about the goal kicking of the, the Dragons and where it might come from, particularly without Bear Thornton. So these are the goals that they're going to have to kick if they're going to win this game. It's a wide kick. Yeah. It won't be a goal. It'll be a minor score. So that was never going to uh, hit the goals, that one. It was a poor attempt in the end. So three behinds plays 12. South Benigo lead 11, gone in the first. So the Bloods now will try again to clear the footy and gee, they go sideways again Torpy's got it still in the back pocket for the Bloods Torpy now he goes back into the corridor oh well done in front I thought the big fella Hamish uh, Hosking was going to take it but chipping in Miller Isaiah Miller took it for the Bloods now he puts them into the centre of the ground can they work something forward here they've got some numbers it's uh, the Dragons defence under the pump a little bit at the moment but they get out of it Skinny Wharton followed down got it had a hand pass to a teammate bounced off his back and Skinny got it back then he's wobbled it along the ground inside forward 50 found Alex Wharton he's been tackled lost it in there there's a uh, Santos player grabbed thrown to the ground and Montague it was uh, always there he's going to get a free kick isn't he yeah it was always there he just was it high the... too high yeah well he didn't have the ball and he put his arms out and the umpire was right there on the money so Brody Montague he's going to line up is he from right on 50 metres gives it a ride won't make the distance into the pocket marking contest no one could take it effectively bloods with numbers in defence and they'll clear through Sam Langley kicks it straight to Rody. Rody didn't mark a ball that he should have 50 out from the Dragons goal they all converge on the football and now it will be a ball up last four or five minutes it's only been played in the uh, Sandhurst forward half hasn't it yeah it has been but um yeah this uh, goal kicking ability to put them on the board as i said some of these mid-sized players are going to have to hit the scoreboard and hit it pretty quickly just to uh, make sure that the game doesn't get away from them early taking a diving mark for the bloods would be a langley langley now defensively he goes short beyond 50 finds leon Cooper Leon for the Bloods looks to come inboard corridor he's got nothing on offer he'll go down the line short finds Brereton who came in late into this team Brereton on right half back swimming pool side right hard up against the boundary line he's a bit unsure steps around a player far too easily Ooh. then he goes long that player was McLean up they'll set themselves Brock McLean got high hands on the ball goes towards the boundary line 55 out from goal Dragons need to be careful Wharton on the end of the handball geez he's had a few possessions he'll go and he'll kick it up to the uh, centre wing good mark down there taken by Kobe Maxted so the Dragons have got on, on the wing out of sight long kick from Maxted inside forward 50 oh mark on the end of it couldn't be taken chance though for the Dragons 40 out there's a snap around the body I reckon that's all right no Walsh Walsh has kicked the Dragons first good work I reckon that was Walsh's uh, first a little bit of action and he did it very very nicely indeed so the Dragons get their first live score thanks to Bendigo Bearings South Bendigo two straight 12 Sandhurst 139 14 minutes gone first it term. was uh, actually a Farrell that uh, spilt the footy uh, at half forward uh, I reckon Sanders uh, we watched a bit of them this season they clock on but it takes them a while to get to work uh, Johnny uh, they, they seem to be better in the back half of each quarter than they are at the start of each quarter same with the storm last week yeah and I'm happy what I'm seeing here with the bloods Hosking wins the tap again to the back door to Rody. First of best possession of the football. Torpy intercepts on half back. Bloods. He'll go to the outer side wing. They can uh, just launch an attack through Poiser here. Long ball inside forward 50. Antonowitz will be the target. 30 out from goal. Brock Harvey did well. Wilkinson for the uh, Dragons. He did well as well. Dished it off by hand. Poor kick. Kicks it to Leon. Affirmed the Bloods. Overran the footy. 48 out from goal. The ball's still alive. Picked up quickly by uh, McCaig for the Bloods. Goes goalward out of hands on the full and we'll have a free kick going to the Dragons. 12 plays 9, Bloods lead it by 12, 15 gone, opening turn. Reckon it uh, might have been touched Johnny, I think they're going to throw it back into play. It wasn't a score though, that's the main thing. No, it most certainly wasn't a score, so the ball will be thrown back in right next to the behind post, deep in the blood scoring zone. There are two straight goals at the moment. In it goes, Hosking the big fella wins it to the front, Dragons a chance to clear Hand pass to a teammate under the pump. Oh, geez, kicked it out of bounds on the uh, full. I reckon it's Montague, and it'll be a free kick to the Bloods. Leon. Just right on the transverse Johnny of the boundary line and the 50-metre arc. 
Oh, this is just about is the layout. Is that the right word? Yeah, that's all I like. Will it do? Yeah, just make them up if you don't. Traverses. Yeah. Traverse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. if you're not happy, ring up. Um, no. Cooper, Cooper, Lee. <laughs> Cooper Leon lining up. No one rings Star anymore, Jock. Don't oh, do they? Starts from outside the boundary line, fires at goal and puts it through for a minor score. The Bloods first. So they go to 2 one 13, the Dragons 1-3-9, 16 gone, first term. Good game of football here at the Queen Elizabeth. Let's Oval. go around the grounds, around the leagues in the Loddon Valley Football Netball League. Morong at quarter time, 3-2-20, mid emo 2-4-16. More potential to be a rip of that game. Now the ball is a half back, kicking by the Dragons. Noah Walsh kept his feet, he'll collect now, so had a good uh, couple of weeks. Oh, hurry kick out of the pack goes nowhere, Blood's attacking, 70 out from goal. Cooper Leon just gets collared, might get one for a hold, and does. Probably too far out to score. Umpire's telling him to uh, move around, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. He'll go into the pocket. He'll be looking for Anton Woods. Sets himself. Big pack fly. Good work, Dragons, to defensively put that over the line. We'll have a ball in 10 metres around from the Bloods goal. 13 playing 9, 17 going first term. Bloods have still got this one. Tell you what you love about Cooper Leon, Johnny. He's in and under everything. And he's got such a big tank. He's at both ends of the grounds. He really follows yeah. it around. He's an absolute ball magnet. From the throw-in, umpire said, uh, throw it in again, I think. Might have been a little bit of a shallow throw. So throw in deep in the forward pocket for the Bloods. They lead by three points at the moment. Make that four. From the throw in, worked down and taken by Furness for the Bloods. He threw it on the left foot and he's put it through. Absolutely something out of nothing. And the Bloods have got their third on the board. So, live score, thanks to Variety Superstore Strat Village, and the Bloods will go to 3-1-19, leading the Dragons 1-3-9, 17 and a half minute mark of the first quarter. You mentioned uh, Cooper Leon, uh, Jock, in the first uh, round, round one against uh, Golden Square, he played, I had him in the best place about each quarter that day, he's a good little player. Fresh live update, Eagle Hawk, 3-1-19, lead, Kangaroo Flat, five behinds. So we'll keep uh, those scores coming through this afternoon. We've got a good one on our hands here. South Bendigo, I'm impressed with what they've brought to the table early. Hosking wins it. Geez, if he's not winning the tap, he's winning the contest. Gives it to McLean. McLean goes to half forward. They'll attack here now uh, through Maxted. He goes short. O'Farrell spots him up, hits him on the chest, and will line him up at a pretty tight angle. You could not ask for a nicer pass than that. Just uh, beautiful. Actually, went out in front, so we just had the brakes dried and just take it. And a defender had no chance to do anything with that. Might have been Palprat that passed that footy to him, but um, it was a good bit of movement regardless. Now, O'Farrell. They need this. We're, right, we're over his uh, left shoulder. He's a left footer. We'll get a good look at it. It's swinging ball. Geez, he started it right. It went left. It actually didn't quite make the distance. Come off hands for a minor score. Very unusual swing on that ball. It was all over the place. Yeah, 19 playing 10. The Bloods lead. 19 gone. Open on. Turn. That was, I think, what do you call it in golf? That was a fade. Yeah, it faded. It faded. Yep. It did fade. Like my career. So, <laughs> so the uh, Bloods will clear. To the other radio. side. You should have said I've never had one, John. Yeah. Up Football they go. radio, I wanted to know, though. Big Three pack, no one to take the mark. Bloods with numbers around the contest, trying desperately to get it out. Can they? They can't. Cooper Leon's in there, can't get a possession. Holmes goes in on hands and knees, taps it towards half forward for the Dragons. Still can't find a teammate. They're all battling hard. The tackling has been terrific. Nobody can get it clearly. Finally, it squirts out. Taken by Cooper Leon for the Bloods. Good hand pass. Finds a teammate wide in space of Smith. Smith turns from the middle, goes long inside forward 50. Poor kick. And Tonowitz was caught behind, and he's put it straight onto the chest of the Dragons defender, and they will clear from the back pocket, swimming pool side. Isaac Ruff with the footy now, plays on for the Ruff, Dragons. Ruff. He goes to the wing, Horbury, got a fist on it, goes to the back of the pack, offering support, was Taggart at the rear, gives it to a teammate, and now they'll surge forward again on the end of one, a nice little pass is Burn, Burn, in board, Jesus, it's a worm burner, mate, he's players work with, they've got the safety numbers, Smith on the end of another handball, he'll send it inside forward 50, but uh, it's all the Dragons, and the mark's been taken by Lockie Hood. So the Dragons will switch play directly across the ground and work it towards half-back grandstand side, where Kobe Maxted has been busy early, and he will take the mark. Maxted's got it, outside defensive 50 for the Dragons. 
takes his time, kicks from outside the uh, boundary line, goes down the wing, O'Farrell almost the mark, couldn't take it, hand pass goes wide, goes towards the blood's prone, Liam Byrne is tackled high, the umpire said, and Byrne will take the free kick between half-back and wing grandstand side. Wastes no time. Goes with a little pass. It's a good one. Finds a teammate who takes the mark. Van Heumann's got it. Wastes no time. Long. Into the forward pocket. Target down there was Torpy. Can he take it? He couldn't. Goes back and gets it. Turns. Fires at goal from about 45 out. And puts it through for a minor score. So the Bloods go to 3 2 The Dragons 1-4-10. Ten-point ball game closing on quarter time. So the ball's kicked into Montague, takes a chess mark, defensive 50, he goes short, spots up Mattel, takes a mark, defensive side of centre wing, they'll bring it down broadcast side, Wilkinson receives, Wilkinson short pass, Dragons over the top, he was looking for Zimmer, couldn't find him, numbers with the Bloods, Van Heumann, oh good tackling, good defensive work Zimmer, he dislodged the ball from the Bloods player in Van Heumann, puts it over the boundary line, 70 out from the Dragons goal ball in, 10 point margin, Bloods lead, 21 gone, opening turn. Blair Holmes just came along then and made a tackle, Johnny, and I think you'd, you'd remember the tackle. It was, uh, it was a fair one, there's a throw in, just outside forward, 50 for the Dragons, it's one to the front of the pack, S uh, Bloods player took That's it but one. was pushed just as he uh, got it on his boot and it's gone over and out of bounds on the full, yep, white. And the free kick will go to Alex Wharton for the Dragons. He's looking a bit thin on top, just like you, Jock, actually. Well, he's like getting, obviously, he's yeah. going to the same barber. Yeah, he is. Yeah. So now Alex Wharton, a bit harsh, Johnny, goes inside forward, 50 for the Dragons, up they go. Holmes scouts it, turns, fires at goal, and... Ooh... That was close. That was magnificent off the boot. Gee, wasn't it? I th oh, obviously, they were in a better position than me. Minus yes. four for the Dragons. They go to one five eleven. The Bloods 3-2-20. So the Bloods' lead is just nine points. Careful, Jock. You'll have to go at the back of the box if you dispute a decision today. Miller yeah. for I've got, the Bloods. I'm holding, I'm holding my hands. Back. Oh, Farrell jumped high, jumped early for the Dragons. Punched it to boundary line and over it goes. 80 out from the Dragons goal and we'll have another ball in. Yes, we've got a rule. If you're the same as the team, Jock, you'll have to go and broadcast on the rifle brigade. Oh, Bloods, yes. by, <laughs> Bloods by nine, 23 gone, first term. That's about 50 ball. metres away. Alex Wharton, good defensive tackle. Can you give Tied me a up. half an hour sentence? Mm. But maybe an hour? A ball up, 70 out uh, from goal. You you guys just going in your own time. I'll call the footy. So Sorry, John. Well, that's your go. Go, John. Hosking, double tapper, but it was sharked by the Bloods burn. He lost it. Uh, Good work, Noah Walsh picks it up, tries to make a path through the pack, lost it for the Dragons. Now it's the Bloods. Hall, can he pick it up? He does. Oh, he's he can't gone. get rid of it. He he's got to be gone. pinged. He has got to be. Yep. Alex Wharton or jo uh, Joel, no, Alex, gives it to Joel by hand. Joel from 55. Goal set a hot spot. All Bloods defensively. They've got the numbers. Did well. Little handball over the top, and Van Heumann has a bounce and is away. See, the defence has been all right so far, the Bloods. They've been under the pump. Oh, no. They've done well, and just as you craze them up, they cough it up straight away. Away. Back down their chance for Brody Montague for the Dragons. Goes into the forward pocket and finds a teammate. Lockie Zimmer has taken the mark. 30 metres out and he's got a teammate in front. Probably 35 out but unmarked and the mark has been taken by Kobe Maxted. Yeah, nice vision. Looked up, saw the space, saw the players loose at centre half board. A much better spotty old kick from directly in front. Just when I said the Bloods defence was doing well, and they were doing well, but just a momentary lapse there. So Max did. Can he get the Dragons second? From 40 metres, goes for home, and it is a very good, straight, accurate kick, and the Dragons have their second on the board. So the contest starts to uh, tighten up a little bit further. Live score, Bendigo Bolt Carpets, South Bendigo 3-2-20, Sandhurst 2-5-17, 25 minutes gone first term. Yeah, nice work. You, you mentioned the kick out of defence. It was just that last one, it was loose, and uh, yeah, Sanders had the numbers there. With that free kick just before that, the South Bendigo played pretty hard to dispose the footy when you've been uh, a really good tackle, and your hand that you're trying to hit the footy with is in the tackle, John. The official term is a chicken wing, I yes. reckon. Yes. So, back into the middle. Hosking will go up. He wins the tap. He didn't really tip tap it to anyone in particular. Leon gets another position. Just ran.
backs them up, gives them to the teammate and Poiser. Poiser further afield and they'll drive it to half forward. Bouncing footy at the back of the pack. Collect by McCaig. He's had a few important possessions up forward. They're a long way from home as the Dragons see it over. Trooper Smith steps over the line and will ball it in. Three point margin, the Bloods lead, 26 gone, opening term at the QEO. So the boundary umpire to bring it back into play. Terrific conditions for footy here at the QEO this afternoon. Uh, do a bill, Johnny. Throw, uh, throw the pen down from the uh, throw in. Up going back to the black and white days, job. Yes. <laughs> go to the Bloods. They go inside forward 50, but a good mark over the back in defence taken by Liam Ireland. Ireland goes wide. Oh, he's coughed it up. Kicked it straight down there in the direction of Oscar White, who takes it. Goes towards full forward for the Bloods, and they've got a mark. Good mark. 12, maybe. Uh, well, it wouldn't be 15 metres, but 12 no. metres out, almost directly in front. And good work by White. He spotted it up, moved it quickly into the hot spot. And the player having a shot at goal will be Will Keck. Well, he'd have to fall over to miss from there, Keck. In he comes, 15 metres, bang. Goal umpire doesn't move and the Bloods get a quick answer. And another one on the board to take their margin back out to nine points. Yeah, uh, nice mark at the back of the pack. Uh, Sapping an important goal as we approach three-quarter time, John, because of the fact that uh, Sanders did kick the last one, but um, that means now the Bloods have some me momentum coming into quarter time. They feel like they're more likely to kick a goal, don't they, the Bloods at the moment. Um, their structure up forward, I really like it, where um, the Dragons are just struggling to, with their mid-sized players to hit the board where they, where they need to if they're going to win the game. So the Dragons will be looking to get first use of the football. The sun absolutely streaming across the QER at the moment. It's peaked through the clouds. Perfect conditions. Probably, uh, I don't know where they've gone to get the footy, but they've gone out to Morong, I it's think. It's back now. Oh, it's a bit of work, John, once it goes over the fence, ends up in Barnard Street, and you've got to wait for the traffic. Uh, you can't just, uh, <laughs> just go running in the middle of the road. And it's not the player's job to do that. Uh, work safe comes in there, John. So Nine point margin, bloods many, lead. Many times the footy's never come back. Well, whose job is it to go and get it if it's not what, the anybody? Umpires? No, you just have a raffle behind the goals. Will mm -hmm. Allen doing the ruck work for the bloods. He jumps, but Hosking grabs it out of the air again. Oh. They're going to have to stop it, aren't they? Uh, the, the bloods just to uh, ease it. Good kick inside forward 50. Alex Wharton got a hands on footy. Now he somehow ended up with it again. Gave it to Maxted. Maxted for the Dragons will go to the hot spot. Didn't look torpy intercept for the Bloods and they'll slow it down and tempo at the last minute yeah, or so. Yeah, he wants some tempo footy. So the Bloods will hold him out again. Torpy's kick long. It's okay to half back. Mark taken by Zach Hare. Zach Hare wearing the long sleeves this afternoon. He may wear them uh, every week. I don't know. From defensive 50. Now he runs off. Goes long, up towards half forward, up they go. No one can complete the mark. Good work at ground level by Alex Smith for the Bloods. Picked it up, threw it on the bird. He was in traffic. Up they go. No one can take the mark. Loose ball, crosses defensive 50 for the Dragons. Now they've got some uh, runners happening. Lee Coglin takes it, goes back to Rody. Rody towards half forward. He's got a player loose. Player down there is Brady Montague. He takes the mark, tries to get around the man on the mark. Can't. Then he's forced to kick hurriedly up into the the pocket wants Max dead. He can't take it. Loose ball. Blood's under the pump. Hand pass wide to Cooper Lee on. He's tackled. Gone. Collard. Lost it. Umpire says he's caught. Good call, Johnny. He's pinged. He got sold. He, well, he got thrown under a bus by his teammate. Yeah, he did, but uh, didn't dispose of the footy correctly. No, he didn't. A couple of Magpies teams in big trouble uh, locally. I'll give you a score update very shortly, Jock. Oh, right on. Mm. Okay. That's all Meanwhile, we say at the moment. Mm. That's all we say at the moment. Meanwhile, a shot at goal for the Dragons, very close to quarter time. James Mattel to take it. Goes across the ground and finds a teammate unmarked. That's Paul. There's two Dragon players sitting there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's wonder how South could uh, allow that. They obviously believe he was going to have a shot at goal. Blair Holmes was standing in the same spot as well. So, Zach Polprot. Paul Pratt has taken the mark as the siren has gone. He will shoot for goal from 40 metres out on a bit of an angle. Oh, it's an absolute okay. shocker. An absolute shocker. <laughs> he's kicked it about 25 metres. 
It's got about five off the ground. It was a south chest mm. mark anyway. So, quarter time here in the big clash, the Graham Wright Memorial Cup Challenge between South Bendigo and uh, Sandhurst. It's the Bloods at quarter time, 4-2-26, leading Sandhurst. The Dragons, 2-5-17. Flash live update. Let's go around the grounds. Golden Square against Maribyrnong. Golden Square, 8-5-53. Maribyrnong. Hi, it's Cherie from Carpet Call Bendigo. Our expert staff and I are here to help. See us today at 10 Nolan Street, Bendigo. Call, call, call. Call, call, Carpet Call. The experts in the trade. It's all about the local footy. It's all about the music. It's all about the SMS requests. Bendigo's Fresh FM. Across central Victoria and online, live local football. Only one station, and you know, it's Bendigo's Fresh FM. We've got a game on our hands here at the QEO in round three in the Graham Wright Memorial Cup, where the Bloods are impressive in this opening term against the Dragons. The Bloods lead 4-2-26 to the Dragons, 2-5-17. Around the rank grounds for a fresh live update out at... Uh, Kangaroo Flat, the Borough lead 6-3-39 to 2-5-17. Magpies in trouble all over the uh, Bendigo Footy League. Castlemaine firstly are only one behind against Gisborne down there, 8-6-54 and Golden Square out at Wade Street 8-5-53. They lead Maribor who have yet to hit the scoreboard. Quarter time, Morong 3-2-20 uh, Midi Mo 2-4-16 Goal kickers to quarter time, Jock. Yeah, for the Bloods, 2-2 to K, uh, Caden Antonowitz he was very good, particularly early in that uh, quarter, when he just found himself some space. One to Will Kick, one to Tommy Brereton, and for the Dragons, one each to Noah Walsh and Kobe Maxted. Better players for the Dragons. Joel Wharton's been good on the few at uh, the end of a few handballs and kicks and a lot of possessions. James Mattel at times, along with Jack uh, Zach Polpratt. 
Blair Holmes, hands and knees as usual. At times, Kobe Maxted. Alex Wharton as well. And the Ruckman, Hamish Hosking, has dominated. Uh, Cooper Leon gets a lot of the footy for the blood, so continue to do that in this game in the first quarter. And times he looks dangerous up forward, uh, Jump. Who did you like for the Bloods uh, to quarter time? Oh, well, I did like uh, for the Bloods. Um, up back, Van Human players like him. Cooper Leon is, is just running from end to end. Hurley started off with like an absolute train, had a number of possessions early. And uh, players like Zach Hare, Torpy, down back as well have been doing a good job. Yeah, the back lines are pretty strong. Torpy's an experienced player and doing well back there as well. Jock, your thoughts uh, to quarter time? Yeah, look, I, I think it's a pretty even game of football. Obviously, you see that from the scoreboard. The Bloods' defence is standing up to Sandhurst pressure and making it hard for them to get shots at goal, even though they've had some chances. Maybe they should have converted. The Bloods, uh, they've probably done pretty well, 4-2, uh, out of the opportunities they've had inside forward 50. I think it's still anybody's game of footy at the stage. A very good contest. They need to find a good finisher, the Dragons, up forward, because they need one of those mid-side players. A finisher. A, goals, a finisher, yes. Look, uh, O'Farrell will get a lot of the footy. Whether he's a good finisher or not, John, I'm not too sure, because his kicking sometimes uh, can let him down a bit, but he's a live wire, good mark, good lead. He's a good target to go to. Uh, but it's uh, far from being uh, worried, sorry, for Sanders at this stage. There's no. uh, only a couple of goals in it, uh, less 26 plays 17. So uh, we look forward to this uh, second quarter. At the Queen Elizabeth Oval, it's Anzac Day round. It's round three of Benigo football and only one station across Benigo and Central Victoria for local football. Benigo's Fresh FM, John Hunter. And don't we love the local footy here? Sunshine. QEO, perfect conditions. We're going to see a big score here. Antonowitz looks dangerous early. They go up. Good uh, ruck work. Dragons again. They'll clear it through the middle. The big fellow I told you at the start of the game, Hosking, is uh, doing really well. Long kick forward by uh, Paul Pratt. He goes into the forward pocket. Bouncing footy. Uh, kick hack out of the air by Alex Wharton. In fact, goes out of bounds on the full. Didn't score. No change to the score. 26 playing 17. Bloods lead opening minute of this second term. So the Bloods have got it right next to the behind post, deep in the back pocket. The kick short is okay, and a mark is taken down there by Cooper Leon. Goes with a short pass, and they've cleared defensive 50 south. Going the long way home, down the uh, wing, out of side. They go towards a contest. Up they go. No one could take the mark. Hand pass over the top. Is a chance. Smith, can he run on them? He's under the pump. Holmes is there. He's lost it for the Dragons. They work it inside forward. 50, the Bloods. It's 40 metres out. Now under the pump is the Dragons' defence. They get it wide with a hand pass. Oh, running through is uh, Cooper Smith. He gets through the traffic. Then his hand pass wasn't good. It's only 30 out from the Bloods' goal. Out by blows his whistle. Do you worry about that? And he's going to ball it up. They were under the pump, the defence of the Dragons. Good pressure from Sandhurst. Ball up 30 out from the South Bendigo goal. Up they go in the ruck. Hosking wins it again. Oh, hurry kick out of the air by the Bloods. It was by Byrne. It went 50 up and 34. Then sluice the uh, pocket. Hu uh, grabbed it hurriedly. Was Will Kick, Kick put it on the boot and just managed to sneak in a minor score. So the Bloods, they lead by 10 points. 27 playing 17. Two minutes gone, second term. Dragons to bring it back into play. Terrific uh, weather this afternoon. There's no problem scoring at either end, one would think. Little kick into the back pocket. Is okay. Layden takes off. Goes down the wing. Out of sight. Now the Dragons have got some numbers. Hand pass over the top. Might have got Noah Walsh under the pump. He did. Coughed it up. Blood's taken in the centre of the ground. Kick back towards half forward. No one could take the marks. Our players got it. Tackle to the ground. Terrific. Strong tackle. And the umpire no choice but to ball it up just outside south forward 50. Tackling Johnny, been good from both sides. Yeah, and the uh, the Dragons have really ramped it up in the opening couple of minutes here at the second term. It's on uh, left half forward for the blood. Hosking for the Dragons wins the tap. Cooper Leon's there. He'll sweep on the footy. Good oh, tough play. He grabbed the football, did a little bit of a uh, blind turn, and then put it on the boot and found it nicely to Miller. Just forward of the centre circle. He'll look to go wide. They'll share it around. He spots up a player. Finds... Uh, 
just, uh, uh, that might be Miller as well. Is there two Millers out there? I reckon there might be. That's so Isaiah that, that just marked that. Now it's a long kick forward by the Bloods to the goal square. They'll set themselves. Good defensive work. O'Farrell who finds himself in the back back line. Punches it over the boundary line and we'll have a ball in. Ten point margin. Bloods lead. Three minutes gone. Second turn. South uh, players wanted a uh, free kick for front on tackle. Umpire having nothing to do with it. Throw in forward pocket. Deep in attack for the Bloods. First goal of the second quarter will be a nice start for South. Taken down there for them by uh, Blake Poyser. He's grabbed in a tackle, thrown to the ground, and the umpire will ball it up again. I think they might have had a case before, Jock, but uh, we're not saying anything about any decisions. Keep your arms down. Mm. Ball up, 20 metres out from South Skull. Up they go. Hosking wins tap out number, what, however many he's gone for. Kick in board. has marked for the Bloods by Brock Harvey, who just keeps going with momentum, runs into an open goal and kicks it for full points. And he actually hit uh, the roof of QEO House, so he didn't just dribble it through, and he went bang, Jock, even he, though he was on the line. He did, he was on the run, it was a very good goal, actually, for the for the Bloods. That will really give him a lot of confidence. So, live score, thanks to Bendigo Bowl Carpets, it's South Bendigo 5-3, 33, Sandhurst 2-5, 17, four minutes gone, second term. Well, they kicked the last goal of the first term, first goal of the second term, so it's all going to plan at this stage. Yeah, but um, super impressive, the Bloods. Uh, Cooper Leon, he just uh, keeps on keeping on, doesn't he? Um, he yeah. just look full of confidence today, uh, South. Their the field kicking is very good. He's yeah. a stocky player, too. He had to go before, and yeah, he went. He did. And he runs the lines, and he's a stocky player, so uh, mm. he's uh, he's got a big engine. Really like the way he plays it. Noah Walsh, he did a blind turn as well. He had to go when he had to go then. Good smuggling ball, Bloods. Defensive work is good. Rough going in there. And uh, also Palprat, he went in hard to contested ball, Brant ground level. Again, Palprat dives in after the footy, can't win it, whistle on play, ball up. Young bloke walking past eating chips and gravy, uh, how good's that, uh, Johnny, at the footy? Well, I had both hey? beef and gravy just before in a roll, really? that was just as good here at uh, the QEO. <laughs> Hoskins <laughs> wins the tap for the Dragons, he's been good through the update. Day. Here he is again, Cooper Leon, oh he coughed up the footy there, he got tripped. Got legged. Got legged. Hurley gets advantage, runs to half forward, Blood's attacking, Antonowicz will be the target. Oh, he's probably a little bit of a stage there, umpire wouldn't have a bar, but oh, go, they go corridor, the Blood's uh, good contested mark has been taken, Lockie Finesse will line them up for another one. That was funny, Brock Pinner also was there, and he, he sort of uh, got in the road to make sure uh, the South player could mark it. Before that, I'm telling you, he went very early, John. Yeah, he flew for the footy, he was in the air before he got there, and then he had to sort of, well, he was doing a bit of uh, work like a dance uh, to stay in the air before the four, when the footy arrived. He was the target, and why wouldn't he be? Lockie Furness now to the city end. Doesn't like it. <coughs> Goal umpire doesn't like it. I don't like it either. Minor score. <laughs> they inch further ahead. 34 playing 17. The Bloods, six minutes gone, second turn. 17 point margin. You'd suggest the Dragons, low scoring game so far. You suggest the Dragons, uh, boys, would need the next one. It, uh, it's a long way to what go. Of course, but just, for conf just, well, just for confidence. Ah, okay. They seem to really be struggling to get. I'd, don't know what time they got their last goal, but it seems a fair while ago. And the Bloods take possession of the footy again. Through Zach Hare. Drives long. Inside forward 50. Loose ball of the back. Antonowitz takes it. Just couldn't oh, scrape oh, up. Oh, uh, shake oh, off his opponent. But he's kicked it backwards and found a teammate. Mark taken by Brock Harvey, who goes short to an unma uh, unmarked player. 20 metres out and he's kicked another one for South. Oh, it was like a blood bank. They were everywhere. They were just uh, hooving around. He could have picked three or four players to pass that to. The good thing about the Bloods uh, forward line at the moment, and told you that was a really clever kick back inboard, yep. but also when uh, Brock Harvey marked it, he didn't want... Well, he went to play on, just about, Jock. I thought the umpire might have caught him to play on, John, but he didn't, and then they're looking for options. They're not just blazing away. If you have well, a look, Oscar White, yes. terrific goal. It was. Now... Antonowitz was one on four. Yeah, he was at the back of all those He was players. at the back of the pack. So he the kick favoured him. It did. And then the kick favoured Brock Harvey when he kicked at Brock Harvey. Brock Harvey nearly played on and was almost <laughs> called, but uh, didn't. But the, the work in the forward zone was really, really good. Antonowitz could have blazed away, couldn't he? Is my microphone working? I think I just said all those things. Yes. <laughs> Testing. One, two. <laughs> Am I on my own, John? Yeah. Cap Captain oh, okay. Invisible. Sorry. Yeah, the it. ball went over into uh, Elvis's Cadillac again, that. so there'll be a slight, uh, slight hold-up. But aren't they playing with a lot of confidence, South yeah. Bendigo? 
They are. It's the best I've seen them play this year, well only in round three. But uh, considering they came off a bad loss last week. Yeah, yeah, they've regrouped very well indeed. And from round one as well. Um, not that they were bad in round one, but this, this is a different uh, blood. They are really on the mark. Hosking. Just grabbed it out of the air. He's done that about four or five times this afternoon. Goes to half forward. Brody Montague is just labouring at the front of the pack. Here did well. I'll share it around. Chain to handballs. Long kick now by Johnson of the Bloods. Noah Walsh got hands on football. Couldn't get it. On the end of it, Blood. Lockie Furness. But he will give it to uh, that man, Leon Cooper. Cooper, Leon. Which way is it, Jock? That's now uh, either the one, Bloods. Either one either you, way want, you want. He's good either way. Hall. He gives it to a teammate in Hurley. Runs to half forward. He kicks it. There's a hard lead. Antonowitz. Back of the pack. Running after it will be Byrne. Can he keep his feet? They, the cavalry arrives for the Dragons. They're doing well. It was Jake McQueen who hurriedly kicks it out, bounces towards the boundary line, tumbles over, and we'll have a ball in. Just watching uh, Brody Montague before, Johnny, he, he can't be right. Because if that's the pace he's going to run at the footy at, I'd be sending a mess, runner out to have a... I'll tell you what he looked like. He looked like Essendon were against uh, Fremantle last week. Who's a couple a of them mid midfielders and just didn't run. Didn't just chance. having a jog around in the sunshine. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that. And that's about how they're going at the moment. Throw in. Right across the forward 50 arc for the Bloods. Second, third bounce. Well done. It was uh, hit onto the chest of Burn again. Left foot oh, kick mate. to the hot spot. No one can take the mark. Now the Dragons defence is really under the pump. Little kick is OK. Marked by Cooper Smith. And he's got it in the back pocket for the Dragons. Goes with another little short one. Finds a teammate. Mark taken down there by uh, Lachlan Murdoch. He comes down the wing grandstand side. Marking contests, okay, Maxted takes it, plays on quickly, wants Holmes on the wing, couldn't take it, he's got two to beat, loads of tackle, ball in dispute, chance down there for the Dragon, picked up by Mattel, whistle on play. Nice tackle. Going to be a Dragon's but no, South Benigo. South Benigo free kick. Great tackle. Player to take it, Cameron Taggart. He's got up a bit gingerly and he's gone backwards towards centre half back and given it to a teammate down there. Daniel Johnston's taken the mark. He goes further across the ground, going laterally. Now they go into the centre. It's worked toward Van Newman. Dodges around an opponent, goes to the centre of the ground. Player taken, uh, takes it down there for south and kicks hurriedly towards half forward. Bouncing ball. No one can get it cleanly. There's a pack of players. They go to ground and the umpire's going to ball it up 65 out from South Skull. You mentioned that um, the Bloods are on, Wallace. Mm. I don't think the Dragons are on at all, and that was just highlighted by Montague a little bit earlier. They just seem a little bit off their game. A Hosking wins the tap to the outer side wing. Bloods, they'll look to launch off half forward. Rody wins it, gives to that player we mentioned, Montague, by hand to Lee Coughlin. He's been quiet, I haven't called him. Goes to Jake McLean. Dragons, attack, good mark, Max dead. Umpire will pay it, just got a fingertip. Yep. He looks mark. to go corridor. Now, he kicked it, he kind of shanked it, it was a, he was in two minds whether to go the drop punt or I don't know what he was thinking, but it just shanked it wide, it's come off hands, lucky to be not out of bounds on the full, 10 metres out from goal, we'll ball it in. So the ball in, deep in the forward pocket for the Dragons. They need to put a little bit of something on the scoreboard, you would suggest, just to get a bit of confidence back, because they are playing well below their best at the moment. There's the throw in. Plenty around the contest. Hit to the front of the pack. No one can take it cleanly. Sandhurst player took it. He was tackled to the ground. Ball spills over the line. And out of bounds, and we will do it all again. South doing really well contested footy. If you have a look at a lot of their breaks, uh, when the ball stoppages, uh, South come away at the football. Well, Montague did come off uh, as we were talking for a break on the bench from the throw in. Chance for the Bloods, hurriedly thrown on the boot. Kick back towards the centre of the ground. It should come back. Chance for Murdoch to take it. Oh, oh for the Dragons. He's absolutely lost it. Fallen over. It's kicked inside forward 50. No one home but Harvey, who has a bounce, runs his full measure and kicks the easiest goal he'll probably kick in his history. A good transition footy, though. The ball, South got it into the middle. And then they looked up, and there was only one player standing inside attacking 50 at centre-half board. Good pass, and then he just had to stroll in. He probably ran 25 to 30 metres to kick the goal. We've seen this a couple of times, haven't we? We've seen Antonowitz by himself. Now we've seen Harvey, and there's been a couple of other players as well. So we talked about the setup that the Bloods have in that back half. This is what the, where they reap the rewards up for, where they get players um, forward of the ball. Dragons, Dragons just got sucked up the ground, couldn't get back. Yeah.
in a little bit of trouble here, the Dragons. Uh, I want to show something. Well, they haven't touched the scoreboard no. last turn. I just wonder whether Coughlin's right, who just, uh, as I speak, gets the footy. A little bit of a hurried handball. They're away now, Hosking at the end of one. Hurried kick onto the boot. It was ugly. Uh, Alex Wharton overrams the footy. Then he gives it to his uh, brother. He won the ball, gave it to Joel Wharton, who goes, Goldwood fades, fades late for another minor score. So it'll be 18 playing 46. Blood leads, 13 minutes gone, second turn. Yes, well, they uh, could have done with a better score, but at least they've got something on the scoreboard for this second C term. Dragons have kicked one point, and the Bloods have kicked 3-2 in this term. Yep, and it's 13, 13 minutes gone. So the Dragons uh, under the pump a little bit at the moment. They kick out from South Good, and they've got a mark on defensive 50. They go inboard towards Liam Byrne. Oh, the kick fell short. He's under the pump. He's attacked. He's lost it. It's spilled clear. Chance for the Dragons. Little centering kick. Walsh the target. Didn't get to him. Bounce. Tried to pick it up on the half volley. Couldn't take it. Blood's defence stand up. Thrown under the boot. High kick. Clears defence of 50. All Dragons again. Should come back. Little toe pokes. Okay. Joel Wharton takes it. Turns. Goes with another pass. Oh, his teammate. That was Walsh. Dropped it. Couldn't take it. 40 out from the Dragons goal. Under the pump. There's a left foot kick at goal. It was taken down there and just snapped on the boot. And I reckon he's put it through, has he? Yep. He has. And it's, uh, is it Zach Paul yep, Pratt? Yep. Paul Pratt. Well, something out of nothing. Boy, did they need it, the Dragons. That's their actual third goal of the afternoon. And it's taken until halfway through the second term to get it. Live score, thanks to Bendigo Bearings. South Bendigo, 7 4 46. Sandhurst, 3 6 24. Yeah, it was hard work. Uh, I give credit to Sanders, though. Uh, John, they kept, uh, they didn't quite get their school element right there, but they kept persisting, and that time they got a, a forward enough to uh, actually have a shot at goal. Yeah, and uh, those names I mentioned, uh, Coglin and Blair Holmes, have been a little bit quiet. So I'm just wondering whether Coglin's right. We saw him limp off last week. I'll give you some useless information as well. We've kicked 10 goals and I haven't called one of them as yet. So back into the middle we go. Bloods, I'll go forward. It's not all about me, I know, but I'm just feeling a little bit left out. Half forward, Bloods. Dragons win it. Bill give over the top. Series of handballs. Noah Walsh was on the end of it. He gives it by hand to Cooper Smith. Cooper Smith will go inside forward 50 now for the Dragons. O'Farrell it was a good attempt at the ball. Keeps his feet. Traps it. 60 out. Now he goes a little give. That was nice by hand to Cooper Smith. A long ball inside forward 50. The top of their goal square. Max Ted couldn't quite mark it. Five metres out from goal. Doing well. The Bloods. Ta Cam Taggart especially did well. Held it up. At the teeth of goal, we'll have a ball up. 46 playing 24, Bloods lead. Yeah, 16-minute mark. I reckon Sanders have uh, just decided to hit the go button, though. They, they look a bit more desperate at the moment. Yeah, last few minutes, not before time. Ball up on the edge of the 10-metre square. There's a hurried kick at goal out of the congestion, and it's gone through for a minor score. So the Dragons go to 3-7-25. 21-point lead to the Bloods, who are 7 4 46. Uh, quick kick in. That's okay by the Bloods. They're in the back half. Magpies on both fronts are struggling. Fresh live update. Mirabarra yet to score. Golden Square 12-10-82. Uh, and Gisment 11-10-76. Lead Castlemaine a solitary behind. As we get back here at the uh, QEO, the Bloods have possession in the back half. Here it's 46 playing 25. So we've got the close one so, so far. Long kick to the outer side, they'll set themselves. Intended target will be Sam Langley, who's been quiet, but it's all the Dragons again. They'll come from centre wing. Long ball, shallow inside, forward 50. Rody flew high, couldn't get it. Blair Holmes overran the footy. Leon, they'll, they're like two bulls wrestling for it. <laughs> Look at them. Look at them go. Who's going to win? Blair Holmes gets the free kick. But <laughs> it was a contest with... Uh, what was it? Got, wasn't it? Was it caught with the ball? Yeah, yeah, apparently. Blair Holmes inside, forward 50. Oh, good, strong mark. Max dead. I reckon has taken it for the Dragons and will line them up on a 45-degree angle. He's done well, too, because uh, he snuck around. If you have a look, John, he keeps just going back, but he's walking uh, to the right of the goals, which opens up the face of the goals. He's yeah. been a bit of a target, hasn't he? He's not being sneaky, is he? He's been sneaky, but he got away with it. I'm probably letting him do it. Yeah. Now, let's see what he does. Slow, deliberate approach. It fades, but he likes it, and so does the goal umpire. So, the Dragons, they inch a bit closer. 4 7 31 to the Bloods, 7 4 46. A live score sponsor, Bendigo Bulk Carpets. 
at the QEO, 18 minutes gone. Yeah, I just sensed about five minutes ago that Sanders uh, were trying to attack the footy, well, the contested football, and uh, I reckon that's proven to be true because they're starting to hit back a bit now, Dragons, in the second term. Early days, 15-point ball game. Hamish Hosking has not lost a tap in the centre. He's been absolutely dominant. Two weeks in a row. Which goes to show that uh, maybe that's not the be-all and end-all because they're behind on the scoreboard, have been all day. But this time, he's got it down to the little fella in Noel Walsh. Got it on the left foot, found uh, Skinny Wharton, who goes back. Finds a teammate down there, it's taken by Zach Polpratt. He goes long, up towards the forward pocket. The target down there was Jeremy Rohde, but the ball eludes him. It ran away from him and over the line and out of bounds for throwing in the forward pocket for the Dragons. Go around the grounds, Mitty Emmo, 7 8 50 at half time, Morong, 6 4 40. I'll tell you what it does do, Jock, though, winning it um, as he does. I think it's put them a lot closer than what they feel like they should be. That player wins the footy now. A left foot, a hurried shot at goal, and will put it out of bounds on the full. Also, uh, out at Kangaroo Flat, they trail 4-7-31 to Eagle Hawk, the Borough, and 9-5-59. That's, uh, that's not a big gap, though. That's, that's a reasonable contest. Yeah, do you feel like that uh, the game is further apart than what it is? I actually feel like the Bloods are further ahead. Uh, no, I no. just looked at the scoreboard. I reckon it's about 15 points. Feels about 15 points. Worked wide. Skinny Wharton all under the pump. He's had a fling at goal on that trusty left foot and has put it through. And the Dragons get another one. Johnny, here they come. So they've narrowed it back to nine points. Live score update. Thanks to Variety Superstore, Strath Village, South Bendigo, 7446. Sandhurst. 5-7-37, last three goals of the contest. Yeah, I think it's a very good move to get the uh, ball into the hands of Joel Wharton anywhere near 40 goals and under. Yeah, uh, absolutely. From any angle, he is a dangerous player. He knows where the goals are. That was a beautiful kick off the boot. And loves, was, loves a goal. Yeah. I was talking about Hosking as well. In that bit of play when we were... Mm -hmm. uh, I reckon he had three or four important possessions uh, forward, so he's really influential. Herley wins it uh, for the Bloods, hurried kick forward, didn't look, just banged it on the boot, and went straight to the Dragons player in Murdoch. Murdoch now swing wide, swimming pool side. Free kick will be given to Alex Wharton, chopping of the arms. And right half back. He'll go inboard, receiving a handball, be laden. Dragons now to half forward. Looking for O'Farrell, hands on footy. Leon's got it now for the Bloods. Fane's two handballs, then gives it to Brereton. Oh, they're going to get Collard here. Yeah. Blair Holmes gets involved and wins a free kick for his trouble. Yeah, one too many. Don't take on one of the best tacklers in the competition unless you are sure of yourself. They go into the centre of the ground, the Dragons. Chance now to be set up through Cooper Smith. He's been good in the second term. Goes to Montague back on the ground. He's marked just outside forward 50. Montague pops up. Tiny little pass over the top. Was taken down there by Cooper Smith again who's run on and has fired at goal from 40 metres out and has just barely snuck it in for a minor score. So the Dragons to 5-8. The Bloods are 7 4, 21 and a half gone. Second term here at the Queen Elizabeth Oval. Zaya Miller Bloods, full back will kick it in. Ever since we mentioned the Dragons, we thought they were a little bit stagnant and standing flat footed. They seem to have switched on, Jock. Yep, yep, clearly they've got the radio going in the coaches to go. Uh, that they were back in the contest, Johnny. Yeah, well, they are. I just didn't want to accept it. No, I'll accept That's it now. Because I was actually. I don't think you them. can hear my mic working no. in your headset for some reason. No, it's um, the skill. I was what There's I was seeing with the Bloods. Why is the skill there? Johnny, you got to listen to what the co other commentators are saying. Umpire will throw it in. Up they'll go. Hosking, double-handed tap to the front of the pack to Coglin. He lost the footy. Brereton will uh, be invited to play on advantage. There was no advantage there. Are they going to call it back? They'll have to, surely. No advantage. Yep, coming back. Kiraly now with the ball. Bloods. Defensive side. Short to Leon. Leon, he just got, um, what's that word when they get um, underneath Tunnelled. It? Tunnelled. Gets tunnelled. So they've just reverted to this game where they maintain possession bloods. Leon will rack up another stat. They've only gone uh, five metres. They've gone around in circle. Laterally. Langley. Bloods. Further laterally. We'll pick out Oscar White. We've gone from wing to wing. 
broadcast side now. Short pass over possessing a fraction. Lockie Hood. Mark, uh, oh! Sorry, back was Taggart. Wrong 22. Yeah. Will Keck got his neck stretched and he'll take the free kick on the wing grandstand side, but just as well mm. because they had overpossessed it. Now, long kick from Keck. Inside forward, 50. Up they go. No one can take the mark. Back of the pack. Chance down there for the Dragons to take it in defence. Wilkinson. Boundary line too close. He's rolled over with the footy. Out of bounds for throw in. About 40 metres around from the behind post. This time it's the Bloods. Deep in attack in their forward pocket. 46 plays, 38. South in front. Closing on half time. It is the Graham Wright Memorial Cup clash between these two fierce rivals. Don't worry about that from the throw in. Players go to ground. Pack develops and the umpire comes in and will ball it up. And I'm very pleased to say that we're nearly halfway through the game and no one's on the mark put their hands out. There hasn't been any of that rubbish that they've had in Melbourne, Johnny. So that's been good. They're good boys from uh, the. <laughs> Tap down from Hosky, Prop which was a beauty. Right. Got it to Rody. Rody threw it on the boot back towards the centre of the ground. Turned Here it over. Go. Blood's come back. It's taken down there for them by Will Kick. He's oh, gone into wow. the pocket looking for Antonowicz, who takes it, shrugs off a Dragons defender and kicks a goal. How good is Will Kick's kick? Yep. Now, uh, Antonowicz was the back of the pack, so had it came, dropped short at all, Sanders were away. They had uh, a player just standing there waiting for it, but he measured it magnificently. And uh, and Tom only had to stand there, turn around, kick a goal. Great work, Will Cack. SOG. No doubt about that. SOG. SOG. Yeah. Is it? Son of a gun? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I was just clarifying with it. Thanks, Thanks. Mark. Ugly at Magpie Land still. Well, we're not at Magpie Land. Uh, both Magpies are away, but uh, Gisborne are uh, 76 and Castlemaine are one behind. And Golden Square are uh, 82 and Meribara is zero. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, not good. No. Back here at the QEO, Brock Harley, handball over the top, trying to find Brereton, couldn't. They'll cough it up. Rody is being quiet. Nice, clever tap on the end of it. Now is Zimmer. It was a series of handballs after that tap. Inside forward, 50. Max T got a lot of the footy. He's not far out from goal. Oh, just on the boundary line. He's still in the contest. Gets uh, collared. He was over the boundary line when he did. 25 out. And we'll have a ball in. 52 playing 38. Bloods lead. 25 gone, second turn. It was a good build-up from the Dragons, but the last kick really was nothing. Yep. It just was to a contest. Would have been better going to the hot spot. So the ball to be brought back into play. Is it? I think. Where are they all going? Waiting for the footy. They didn't kick a goal when we didn't know what was happening. They did. It's a goal. It's a goal. So, um, gee whiz, that was really lacklustre. It was uh, a little bit of play going on while we were just chatting about to ourselves. So well, I thought it had gone back out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, there was, it was just really lacklustre. Well, <laughs> let's go. We've got a live score sponsor. Thanks to Bendigo Bearings at South Bendigo, 8452. To Sandhurst, 6844. 26 gone, second term. Yeah, Santa's hitting, hitting back uh, in this game, in this second term. It's taken them uh, up until about 16 minute mark to, to find their mojo, but they've found it and they're right back in this contest. I'm not sure what that says about me, but I was actually watching that and I, <laughs> and I didn't see it. Ball up back in the centre. Closing on half time. Won't be a long way to go. Bloods should get the take out from the centre. They will. They go laterally again. Now they've got a chance to build something from the wing. Grandstand side. Long kick towards half forward. Bouncing ball goes over the line and out of bounds to be thrown back into play. Just outside South Bendigo's forward 50 metre arc. You didn't have your glasses on, Jock. That, that's what the problem was. Well, I was just looking at it. I just, there was no reaction, you know, that you get from a goal in a close game. No. It sort of gone back over the line for another throw-in. From the throw-in here, this time it was a throw-in. Kicked off the ground. Inside forward, 50 for the Bloods. Cooper Leon, good pick-up. Hand pass over the top. Santos player took it and ran over the line and it's out of bounds to be thrown in again. This time about 40 metres around from the behind post. So the Bloods, ooh, 27 goal on the clock, maybe a chance for one more just before half time. Be big for them if they could do it. Up they go in front. Hosking won it down, taken by Coughlin. Good, Good kick, centre of the ground. Mark taken by Montague. Now a chance for the Dragons. Montague from the middle of the ground. Goes to half forward, couldn't find a teammate. Loose ball over the back. Runs inside forward, 50. Zimmer's after it, picks it up. Goes for home, Mocky Zimmer. And just put it through for a minor score. I watched that one through. Yeah. 
but it was just the minor score. Good build up again. Not able to capitalise fully though, the Dragons. They're 6 9 45. South Bendigo 8 4 52. Live score. Thanks to Bendigo Bolt Carpets. Miller on half back for the Bloods. We'll go to the wing. I'll tell you what's missing from this game, actually. It's actually crowd involvement. There's actually nothing. There's very uh, small crowd by the sounds of it. As I'll go inside forward, 50 bloods. Antonowicz, intended target. Provides a contest, probably a little bit over Alice on that occasion, and gives away a free kick for a hold. Just a little bit. Crowd's not too bad, John. Yeah, they just uh, when there's been goals kicked, though, this just doesn't seem to be the uh, emotion and behind it. Just because one. you missed one, John, you're blaming the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. Yeah. Liam, Liam <coughs> Ireland receives a mark. He goes... I'll tell him that. Can you sing out a bit more down there? Yeah, well... Just well, like keep it. John happy. Liam Ireland, beyond 50. They'll set themselves. Oh, Farrell... Good uh, attempt at a mark. Leon, he swooped on it for the block. Oh. Sold a bit of candy. He now gives it to Poiser. Poiser, he looks up. He doesn't want to have a shot at goal. He'll go corridor. It's oh. a good option. Very unselfish football. The Bloods unchecked directly in front. They'll have a shot at goal. And uh, I reckon it's um, with, the, with the footy. Zach here. Zach here. Uh, are you sure there, Jock? There was a couple of players uh, no, involved with that. It. Taggart was there no, as well. Brock he could have marked it. No, his hands is over. Brock Harvey now. Because it was a bloke with the sleeves. Brock Harvey. He handed it over. It was a mark. Directly in front. Let's see what he does with the footy. Usually pretty good, and he yeah. is on that occasion. So good a little bit of a steadier for the Blood Live School sponsor. That's his third for Bendigo Bearings. The Bloods just increased the lead. They'll go to 9 4 58. To 6 9 45. We're in the shadows of half time here at QEO. They've done it a couple of times now, South Benigo. When they've got the ball at half forward, they're happy to bring it inboard and look for a target at centre half forward. There's a couple of players standing there. Brock Harvey has won, and also Taggart was just behind him. And there wasn't a Santos player in between those, so they could have raffled it there. But Brock Harvey's a good player to get the ball right in front like that. They just stood there forever. So a bit of a uh, defensive lapse from the Dragons back in the centre. Up they go. Good tap down Hosking. Got it to a teammate down there. Paul Pratt tried to run through the traffic. Couldn't. Turned it over. Here come the Bloods again. Burn. Long kick. Inside forward. 50. Marking contest. No one could grab the footy. Island's got it. He's under the pump. 10 metres out. Needs some support. Just gets it. It's thrown onto the boot hurriedly by the Dragon defence. And it's a South Bendigo mark. 40 metres out, but close on the boundary. In the scoreboard pocket, and I reckon it's... Uh, is it kick? Long kick on the left oh, foot. I know, I'm old. Right to the teeth of the goals off hands, and through for a minor score. So... Both sides uh, looking to score here with a 31 minute mark. You wouldn't think that'll happen. The Dragons defensively. South have just settled a bit late in this turn. Yeah, you sense that. Long kick by the Dragons. Mm. Oh, have they got one more chance in them here? Here. Now for the Bloods. Inside forward 50. Spots up here. Lee 45 from goal. Don't think he needs it. Don't pass it or don't play on because the siren is going to blow any second here. It has to. 31 and a half minutes. Oh, I reckon he's going to have a shot. He's right on his... I reckon he's right, right, on, his right distance. on it right on his distance there's no breeze if he hits it sweetly he runs a little bit wide played on in fact he won't make the distance it'll come off hands it's alive still now it comes off hands and will be a minor score so bloods are 60 sanders 45 32 minutes gone second turn long second quarter yeah so i'll throw that in there dragons to uh, bring it back into play Taking their time with the footy down there, Wilkinson. It's looking directly into the sun and he's taking plenty of time. He's uh, definitely waiting for the siren, Johnny, I think. Yeah. How long can he stand there? Uh, I'm surprised the umpires haven't told him uh, to get on with it. It's still, it's just umpires just looking at him. He's probably waiting for the yeah. uh, siren as well. Gee, now he finally runs on. Gains his 20 metres and clears defensive 50 to a big pack of players. They contest the mark. No one could take it. Hits the deck. Pack develops and the umpire will ball it up. 
We did have a couple of occasions, remember, where the ball had to be fetched from Morong uh, at the Barnard Street end. Was from Morong? Yeah, yeah, I reckon it was. It felt like it a couple of times. So there's the ball up just outside forward, 50 for the Bloods. Have they got time to score one more? Oh, gee, they've got the uh, break here. Now the kick inside forward, 50 to the pocket island. Good defensive punch. Got it down to a teammate down there in Taggart. It's uh, not Taggart, it was uh, Hood. Hood threw it on the boot. Cleared defensive, 50, found a teammate. He took it on the bounce and then was tackled. And the umpires pinged him for caught with a footy. South free kick, 55 from goal. So the Bloods... Liam Burn, I reckon, with a footy there. One more chance, maybe. Kick to the hot spot, plenty up. There's a whistle on play. Yeah. Oh. I thought a South Bendigo free kick. Interesting, because a, a South Bendigo player went early in the pack and looked like he pushed out his opponent, but the umpire's uh, seen something else happen in that pack. Free kick, South Bendigo. 20, oh. meters, 20 metres out directly in front, and there's the half-time siren. So we know what he won't do, Jock. He won't play on. Well, I wouldn't think so. Not if he wants to kick a goal. He won't. Antonowitz, I'll tell you what he will do. He'll kick a goal. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> We're waiting for the ball to come back, are we? No, no, he's got no, the He's lying up. So 20 metres out. Jeez, oh, a bit of a net. Ooh, he's pushed it wide. Dragons dodge a bullet, and it is half time at the Queen Elizabeth Oval. Live score, South Bendio 9761, Sandhurst 6945. That was an important kick, wasn't it, at uh, that stage of the match? Unusual uh, for him to miss one there. Uh, he hasn't done a lot wrong today. Let's go around the grounds for a fresh live update. Mm. Eagle Hawk lead 9559 to the Kangaroos. Kangaroo flat 4731. And Magpies, Gisborne against Castlemaine firstly. 11 10 76 Gisman, Castlemaine one behind and at Wade Street Golden Square lead 12 10 82 Maribara still yet to score. I'm thinking we've got the close one at half time in Benigo football. Anzac Day round it's half time South Benigo 9 7 61 lead centre 6 9 45. We'll be back we're going to go around the grounds plus look at uh, uh, better players goal kickers to half time on only local footy it's only one Benigo station, Benigo's Fresh FM. From Central Victoria.
To Joel Wharton, Noah Walsh, James Mattel and Zach Paul Pratt. Now I know that the uh, Dragons did come back at the Bloods in that quarter, but uh, not as easy to find uh, the usual good players amongst them. Joel Wharton, of course, is one of them that uh, has certainly had a two-quarter really good effort. Uh, at times, Zach Paul Pratt has come in and out of the game. Kobe Maxted as well has been good. Lockie Zimmer, I've liked uh, his pace around the football. Hamish Hosking just continues to win tap after tap and centre clearances. But a few names missing. Lee Coughlin, I'm just not sure whether he's quite right. And uh, in and out of the game, I reckon Blair Holmes as well. Yeah, they're just patchy, aren't they, the Dragons? Yeah. They're just sort of... Um, they're, having, they're putting together five good minutes... And you think here comes the challenge, they're back in town, and then they just south up the eddy again. Yeah, I think I mentioned in the call that um, the Dragons, they seem to switch on. We mm. had a bit of a dip at a couple of players that we thought were just labouring after the football when they didn't have possession. And then after that point, I don't know whether they, they might have hurt us, we might have an influence job, but certainly they just changed that intensity when they didn't have the footy. But at the end of the day, it's only 16 points at half-time, so it's clearly anybody's game of footy. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm liking what I'm saying with the uh, Bloods. They, uh, they do possess the football a lot in that back half, but we've seen on a number of occasions that uh, players up forward have found, uh, found space. Brock Harvey has found, found space, Antonowicz has f uh, found space, Cooper Leon at times has found space as well. So, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're going along quite nicely. The Big Bloods. game in the uh, Loddon Valley Football Netball League today. It's Mitty Emmo and Morong at half time, thanks to Wayne Smith. It's Mitty Emmo 7 8 50. Matthews has two goals, along with uh, Turner. Uh, lead Morong uh, 6 4 40, and Johnson has two goals to half time. Around the leagues, uh, also around the Benigo Football League, not. Not a pretty picture, John, at half time. No, not uh, for if you're a Magpie fan, either Miraburra or Castlemaine. Last scores we had to hand Golden Square, 12 10 82 lead Miraburra, yet to hit the scoreboard. Castlemaine down at Gisborne, they trail badly. They are one behind uh, the Bulldogs, 11 10 76. And out at Kangaroo Flat, Kangaroo Flat trail, 4 7 31 to the Borough. 9-5-59. And the Bloods 9-7-61 lead Santa 6-9-45 at half time. It's the Graham Wright Memorial Cup this afternoon and South Benigo will be happy with their work to half time. Uh, today uh, thanks to our sponsor Jamaica Blue at uh, Marketplace in Benigo. We've got a $30 voucher to give away for a player that we believe, uh, not necessarily best on the ground, but has an impact on this game. I can think of two at the moment. John, you got anybody in your mind yeah, well, that maybe uh, we're looking at after the game? We could probably nominate him as being best on ground as well, but I'm really liking the form of Cooper Leon. He's, he really sticks out to me because he's making things happen. And also, from the perspective of Sandhurst, Hamish Hosking, uh, he makes things happen as well. They're the, they're the two that stick to my mind. Although, yeah, they're uh, great players, but uh, we're looking at... Uh, players that just add a bit of spark occasionally, John. Uh, not necessarily uh, uh, the best player on the ground. Well, I'd be voting at this stage for Caden Antonowitz mm. because he's probably touched the ball five times and he's made something happen every time he touches it, including kicking three himself from limited opportunities. He's a whiz, he's a, he's a very talented player and he's such a dangerous dangerous player up forward. How do you blocks? describe him? Because he, he can run up the footy, he can leap too, he can he can go at the front. He likes to uh, be really, really clever and get around the back too and he seems to have the ability uh, to, uh, well, his uh, defensive uh, player seems to lose him at times and how many times do you see him running around John uh, by himself without uh, an opponent at the back of the pack or side of the pack? I think what highlights his pace, he's got that pace in the first two steps which is really really important when you're a forward and he finds the space and he keeps his feet as well mm. you, you do see him get upended but he bounces he's one of those players that you look one minute he's down and he's up again so he's just got that real factor about him that when the ball gets near him you feel like something's going to happen you probably <laughs> mentioned uh, lee coglin along with um blair home blair home's doing a lot of hard work uh, playing a lot of tackles but not getting a lot of footy um i like walsh's game uh, around the ground but uh, jock where, where do you think they can lift sanders in this uh, second half I, the biggest problem to me is inside forward 50. they just can't it, it looks 
really laboured every time they get inside forward 50 whether or not they can actually get a score. Whereas South, to me, with Antonowitz up there and with Harvey up there, look a lot more likely to be able to score than the Dragons. I think the Dragons, look, they're probably breaking even around the ground. Yeah. Uh, both defences are working hard, but uh, the Bloods, more opportunities to up forward 50. Antonowitz, I reckon he's a mid who can play big and play small. And yeah, play yeah. smart. Uh, Cooper Leon, we talk about him a lot. Uh, it's got a lot of footy. Uh, Lem Byrne also has been impressive. Brock Harvey, along with Antonis, has uh, made the most of his opportunities with three goals to half time. Yeah, and uh, just that Sandhurst, that mid-range we talk about, they seem to win a lot of the ball in forward, but they get a bit nervous when they have a shot at goal. I'm play talking about players like uh, Pal Pratt. At times, uh, Noah Walsh, uh, Mattel as well. Just... Uh, Max dead. He looks like he potentially could win a lot of footy down there, but just doesn't seem to finish. Um, I'd like to see him uh, persist with Sean O'Farrell down there. Uh, he's young and he's got a bit of height about him. He, he just hasn't uh, taken that next step yet as being, uh, you know, really dominant. But um, maybe maybe someone like that just to give them a target because without Bear Thornton they haven't got one. Just uh, there was a couple of highlights in that uh, second term. One was uh, Will Kick Kicks Kick. Uh, right in front of us at half forward, magnificent kick under pressure, and uh, it resulted in a goal to Antomadic, who was at the back. Just a nice work, and also that goal by Joel Wharton uh, to the Barnard Street end. Beautiful kick off the boot. You know, he's 45 metres out. Yeah, no, it was an absolute ripper. There's no doubt about that. Of course, the danger now for South. Now, last week, they were right in the game with Eagle Hawk at half time, and they just went walkabout in the second half, and we saw in the first round when we did the game against Golden Square. There was nothing in it at three-quarter time and they disappeared in the last yeah. quarter. South's big challenge now is to finish this game off. It feels like a different bloods to me today, though. All right, let's go around the leagues, around the MCD NFL. Uh, we call it uh, Norm Jenkins League uh, for our listeners that have been involved for a long time. Thanks to Paul Wicks this afternoon. Half time, uh, Newstead 12 5 77, Rovers 1 6 12. Something about the Magpies today. They're not, not having a good try. They're not soaring at all. No. Uh, Molden uh, 4 6 30, handy lead over Talbot at half time 2 4 16. Bushy Park, Royal Park 12 5 77. Avoca, uh, 6 3 39. Harcourt uh, played Denali this afternoon. Harcourt, 8 8 56. Denali, 4 4 28. I like that. 8 8 4 4. Yeah. Uh, the keeping in, <laughs> keeping in sync. Uh, Lexton, uh, 11 6 48 lead. Campbell's Creek, 1 2 8 at half time. Navarre, 8 3 51. Lead Natty, 5 4 34. And Trentham, 7 6 48 to Carisbrook, 3 2 20. Some games still alive in the MCD NFL at half time thanks to Paul Weeks some interesting results there wasn't it the fact that uh, uh, Carisbrook is struggling at half time and uh, Bushy are looking alright and uh, Denali has kicked four goals yes. at half time against Harcourt now there is some talk that Denali have, have got a much better uh, side on the park uh, this year John you heard that around the traps uh, no I haven't but no. If, uh, no, Cameron Thanks Power is much. involved out there uh, well he's uh, Yes, yeah. well, he is. In the <laughs> I'm not sure that's. Uh, I'm not sure that's uh, a part Plain of their reserve. improvement today. No, but uh, now there is some uh, talk that they have lifted Denali. Got yeah, some players. Uh, it surprises me that uh, not so much that just a couple of the sides like Carisbrook and Harcourt just not going well as what I thought. They also, uh, it's a long way from being over. Jock that game between Midi and uh, Morong. Morong trail by 10 points at half time. But uh, if they're going to challenge this year, you'd think Morong would be pretty keen to win that game. Absolutely. No doubt about that. You would be uh, looking at Morong for a big second half. I noticed Kane Robbins looks like he hasn't kicked many in the first half. He'd be looking to no. get involved. And uh, Boots Wellington be looking to get involved. So, yeah, I would think... Uh, Link Jacobs will be in there at halftime at the Morong Rooms, pulling a few strings at this stage. What do you think, uh, John? Uh, Sanders came back mid part of that term and then faded again towards the end. I guess we always talk about the third quarter. What do you make of it? To me, it's potency up forward. We've, we've been talking a lot about it, but every time it goes 
forward for Sanders. I just don't feel like that they're going to confidently kick a goal. And when it's on the other on the other foot with um, the Bloods, as soon as it gets to that wing after they've possessed the football, and as soon as it gets to half forward, I, I feel like that they've they've got this structured plan up forward where they're going to kick a goal. Of course, they've got the player in Antonowicz that knows where to run, but it's a little bit to do with their game plan as well. I, I feel like they're going to kick goals, and um, whether they can maintain it because Brock Harvey he needs to give that support to Antonowicz but at this stage of the game it looks like it's, it's coming off. It's a good one-two punch isn't it in the first half Harvey and uh, Antonowicz two clever players and uh, that's to be honest that's probably the difference in the game. Well if they end up with five goals each you think uh, South Bend go win this game. Yep you would. They've got three to half time they can get uh, four uh, small forwards so they can get ten goals by the end of this game uh, they'll be hard to beat, but uh, yeah, it's hard to find a, a marking target. O'Farrell, uh, to me, John, you're right, is uh, definitely a player that uh, has potential to mark the footy overhead for Sanders across half forward. If I was coach of the Dragons, I'd really ask my generals to lift in the middle. I, I, I think that Coglin might be carrying a little bit of injury, but he needs to lift now Walsh even further. South Benigo, uh 61, lead to Santos 45, Jock Clark third term. Gee, the Dragons have gone small to start the third term in the forward line. Have a look at uh, their lineup. Back in the centre, though, they're not small. It's grabbed by Hosking again. Gives it off to a teammate down there in uh, Paul Pratt, who's going long inside forward 50, but it's a bloods and a good defensive mark for Daniel Johnston. Strong mark. Yeah, stood his ground, shrugged off the uh, pressure, goes wide, good kick, finds Zach Hare. He's taken it, still inside defence of 50 though. Hare now, runs around, goes to the outer side, good kick, finds a player in space and the Bloods have got it. Half back, out of side of the ground, looking into the sun. It's always a little bit uh, trickier in this third right. term when you're kicking to the Barnard Street end into the sun. He's kicked to a pack of players and it's a Bloods mark. Miller. So good defensive, uh, good uh, possessive football. Back Danger. towards the centre of the ground. That's okay. And the mark's taken by Tommy Brereton. Now they play on. Brereton plays on long hand pass. Good pick up. Scooped out to Oscar White. What one's yes. his distance? Goes inside forward 50 and finds the gun on a lead. Mark taken. And there'll be a shot on goal for the Bloods from about probably 40 metres out on a 45 degree angle and I would think there is every chance from there that uh, Antonowitz can kick his fourth. You notice he does that stretch at the last moment and he seems to be able to get off the ground at the same time. Uh, not an easy feat when they're running flat out. He looks rubbery doesn't he? Mm. He, he gets a lot of distance between the ground yes. and his uh, centre of gravity when he jumps. Rubber man. Yeah. Oh, you watch him now, he's a high jumper. So a chance for the opening goal of the second half to the Bloods and Tonowitz comes in. It wobbled to the left and didn't come back. So we had the last shot at goal before halftime, the first shot at goal uh, in the third term and missed both. And he's usually such a reliable kick. So a minor score. The Bloods go on to nine goals, 8.62. The Dragons 6.945, two minutes gone, third term. That's a live score. Thanks to Bendigo Bolt Carpets. No doubt could have iced it. But, uh, as getting on the end of it, one is Leon. Leon of the Bloods. It's a little dinky short pass. I'm not sure if that was the correct short way to go. Short to a contest. No good. Yeah. Should have went to the goals. Pressure was on and didn't. Goes over the boundary line. Ball in. But they're attacking Bloods here. You can feel the pressure building. If they can just pinch another one here. Hosking wins the tap for the Dragons. Leon at the bottom of the tap pack. Uh, pack dishes it out. No clear winner. Hurried uh, kick out of the pack, uh, pack by McLean. Maxted receives it. That's an ugly handball on the true centre wing. Whistle on play. Oh, oh, it was for a hold. It was red hot. Blair Holmes is going to get a free kick. He's rewarded. 62 playing 45. Bloods lead. Third term. Three minutes gone. Got a lot of his kicks today, uh, Holmes, by a strong tackling. Yep, well, it's been a trademark of his game all his career. His kick towards half forward, up they go. No one can take the mark. Burn. Got to push in the back and we'll take the free kick.
Centre half back goes short into the centre of the ground. That's okay. Finds Brock Harvey. Wants some uh, options further afield. Now he gets them. Hurley, he runs for him. Takes the mark. Uses a teammate further afield. Keeps going early. He ran into a brick wall. That was a Sanders defender. Lost it. Turned it over. Dragons will come out of defence. They run through the wing on the outer side. Long kick. Target down there was uh, Lockie Zimmer. Knocked away from him. He's got <laughs> some support though. Have a look at the speedster. There's a kick on goal. Wobbly into the square. Maxted gets back, picks it up, and he's kicked it from about one metre out. The Dragons get the first goal of the second half. Was that Mattel? The speedster around the outer side who just picked up the loose ball and just went bang for Sandhurst. I was doing the old right in the score down, but was it Maxted up there early? Yep. Yep. 15, Maxted. So yes. 62 to 51 after that. Uh, w what I liked about it was uh, he's prepared to back himself in with his speed, and he had plenty of it. Yeah, I think I mentioned at uh, half time that uh, he was one that was had the potential to kick a goal and put one on the board because he's uh, in Lockie the Zimmer. Spot. Lockie Zimmer. Zimmer, you're going to get to Zimmer. No, 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 no. Kobe makes it. Zimmer was the one that ran yeah, down the other side down the ground and yep. gave it to him. Bloods. They'll win it to half forward. It's a kick that was swooped on by Alexander Smith. He'll go goalward. Teeth of goal. They'll take it over Ooh. the Dragons for a minor score. Good uh, movement of the footy. Sanders go, uh, South Mini go 9-9-63. Sanders 7-9-51. Five minutes gone, third term. Two goal ball game. Dragons now bring it out of defence. Short, the back pocket. Kick long to a, well, it wasn't a contest. Was South Bendigo all the way. Will Allen takes it on the wing on the outer side. A tall, rangy Bloods Ruckman plays on, gives it wide to a teammate with a little bit of space, kicks it inside forward 50. Nobody can take the mark. Loose ball, chance for the Dragons. Given to Skinny Wharton on the outer side, fakes a hand pass, then goes with one. Gives it over to Blair Holmes, a 200 gamer. He's gone long inside forward 50. Bouncing ball, Dragons can't get a player oh, there. Johnston that. can get there for the Bloods. Well, he's just making out he was all, <laughs> couldn't pick up the footy, John. So, uh, look, uh, Sanders to me in this uh, quarter, though, making an effort to uh, really move the ball quickly quicker than they did in the first half they're looking to play on so the ball uh, to be thrown back into play forward pocket for the Dragons the big fella Hosking takes it out of the ruck again hand pass backwards to a teammate who kicked it into the back of a south player ball drops dead they jump on top of it and now power balled it up right on forward 50 Palprat that man was 12 point margin Bloods lead six minutes gone third term long shadows here at the QEO blue skies Absolutely magnificent conditions. Let's hope we get a close finish here. Hold. It's going to be a free kick. It's going away the Dragons. Yes. Umpire's picked it out. He's going to give it to the big Ruckman. Your mate. In Hosking. I don't think he's got the leg here. The man on the mark is standing at 50. Well, I'll tell you what, he's looking like he's going to have a ping. Well, he spins the ball in his hands. He's having a good look at them. He's, he's a left super footer. kick. Let's see what he can do. That's long and it's high. Won't make the distance. It's short. It'll come off hands. Bloods look to rush it through, which in fact goes out of bounds and we'll have a ball in. He's a possibility to make it, John. He got underneath that ball because he got uh, obviously worried about the distance and he got close to the man on the mark. But he, he was obviously a long kick. He, he kicked that from around 55. Yeah, I reckon if he was 50 out, mm. he'd have a fair shot. There's a the throw in. Forward pocket for the Dragons. Up they go. Max said contests at the back. Couldn't win it. Chance down there for Skinny Wardens. Roved it beautifully at the front of the pack and kicked a goal. So skinny, Joel Wharton has kicked his <laughs> second. And the Dragons are starting to just flex a little bit of a muscle and a challenge. It's back to one straight kick. The difference. He's a little lurker. No, he's a, he's a, he's and, a lurker. Uh, he uh, lurks around the goal face, and if he gets the ball into the hands, John, look out. He doesn't <laughs> miss. He's no. a really good. I like his work around goals. Live score for Bendigo Bearings, 9-9-63 South Bendigo, 8-9-57 Sandhurst. We've played just on seven and a half minutes in this third quarter. Well, they're coming here, the Dragons. Some of the players that uh, we've known over a long period of time, namely Blair Holmes in the middle has been getting their hands on the footy. They'll go forward again. Hurry kick. 
Alex Wharton, juggling attempt at Mark, couldn't get it. Lee Colton getting involved, he couldn't. The big fella in Hosking, a little bit of a handball, that gets dislodged. True centre wing, outer side, swing pool side, contest, ball up. Like Lee Coughlin's a trooper, he's not 100%. If you watch him run at the moment, uh, he's in there battling, but yep. I can't wear it that he's 100% today. I no, can't either. He's not right. There's no doubt about that. Leon tries to swoop on the ball. Blair Holmes collars him, drives him into the turf, and we'll have a ball up. 63, playing 57. Bloods lead, eight and a half gone, third turn. So there's the ball up. Centre of the ground, Hosking, backhander, wins another one. Good work, down to a teammate's, worked over to Alex Wharton, throws it on the boot and wobbles it towards Montague. He's got it at half forward for the Dragons, tackled to the ground. Umpire said no prior opportunity. Yeah, and Holmes has looked at this term as well, getting a lot of the footy in tight, Holmes. Yep, no doubt about that. Ball up, centre half forward for the Dragons. Goal the difference. Hosking wins it down. Again, got it to a teammate who couldn't control it. In goes Skinny Wharton, lays a tackle on the south player with the footy. Bottom of the pack, umpire says. Give it to me and I'll ball it up. 45 out. Dead in front. I'll give you a fresh live update. Eagle Hawk only leading by 19 points against Kangaroo Flat. 79 playing 60. So that's a good effort from uh, Kangaroo Flat at this stage of the game. I tip this. Kick out, uh, hit out. Meanwhile, Cones from Hoxking went to Montague, who's kicked it into the goal square and has been a little toe poke down there from Maxted. Right on the goal line, the goal umpire is conferring with the field umpire and the result is a goal to the Dragons and the scores are locked up at 9-9 nine, nine apiece. Yeah, they've come out uh, breathing a bit of fire, the Dragons, in the third term. They're winning a lot of, uh, well, non-contested footy and contested footy at the moment. That was just clever. It was in the goal face. It's close to the goal. He just got the boot to it. Well, Montague, we, we said he, he showed a couple of lazy passages of play in the first half, but it was all over that. Got it into the goal screen. The ball but it just bounced beautifully for Maxted. I reckon that's the way he runs. I reckon his blokes oh, are a bit harsh on him, to be honest. No, I do. Go I on. do. You watch him. OK, well. <coughs> Back into the middle, Hosking wins it to Coglin. Oh, it's champagne football here at the QEO. They'll go forward again. It'll be a long kick in board. Oh, Cooper Smith hits up a player. Maxted again. He ran to the pocket and will take a mark and will line them up, 48 from goal. Yeah, great delivery by Cooper Smith, just laces out. There's a magpie coal going on around Central Victoria at the moment. I'll uh, update you very oh, shortly. No. Yeah, it's not good. Maxted, Dragons. Let's see what it can do. He'll do nothing. That'll be lucky to be scored. Huh. It's not, so we're still 63 apiece. OK, let's go to Gisman. Gisman, 22-15, mm. 147. Castlemaine, one behind. Golden Square, 21-13, 139. Maribara, one goal straight six. Who's the goal kicker, son? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Never mind. Footy's a tough sport. Meanwhile, the ball's moved back towards half-back for the Bloods, but they're under the pump. Coughlin takes it. Beautiful hand pass. Got it to Paul Pratt. From 40 out goes for home. And it's either marked right on the line or through for a point. And the umpire has paid the mark. Right on the goal line. The Bloods have got it. Defensive end. Backs to the wall. Scores level. 11 and a half gone. Third turn. Oh, playing on with the footy was Torpy. Eventually he goes short. Went from one behind post and kicked it to a teammate on the other behind post. So they didn't gain a lot from that. And now 50. It's, yep. First 50 for today. It's going to uh, South Benigno. It was in the back pocket. So he'll come just out. Defensive uh, 50. Taken by Hurley. Who goes long towards half forward. On the lead, he's found Brock Harvey, who takes the mark. Wing, grandstand side. Long inside, forward 50. Thumped away by the Dragon defence. Loose ball. Now a chance for the Dragons. They've got some numbers. Can they work it out? Good series of hand passes. Worked over to Zimmer. Zimmer goes down the wing. Grandstand side, marking contest. No one could take it. Just taken by the Bloods down there by Big Sammy tackle. Langley. And he was absolutely tackled into the turf. And the umpire said in the back, free kick Langley, and the Bloods get it back. I don't know about that, Jock. It was a pretty good tackle, but um, I didn't agree. Bloods will go forward here. Brereton, he goes to Hurley. Has a bounce. Goes to 50. The goals are open. He'll fire. It's an ugly-looking ball. Bounces. 
minor score. He's a good player here early though. Watch yeah. him. He's getting a lot of the footy. So Pat, they kick. take the lead. The Blood, 64 playing 63. 13 gone third time. Johnny, were you just sending in the umpire's call? Yes, a little bit. Off you go, Johnny. Off Off you go. Go. Naughty yeah. corner. Come on. We have to show an example. So the Dragons will bring the ball back into play. It's a one-point ball game, halfway through the third term. Long kick. Oh, no one went for the mark. Bounces towards the centre of the ground. Crum is needed. Cooper Leon, he's been there for the Bloods. Takes it. Good little poke out. Got it in the direction of Torpy. Torpy goes into the forward pocket. Wants a teammate. Can't find one. Can he? No, it's over the no, line. No, he dropped, and out the, of he dropped the mark and the uh, ball over the boundary line. Oh, thought he'd marked it. Mm. Just fumbled it over the boundary line. So throw in deep in the forward pocket for the Bloods. They're kicking to the Barnard Street end of the ground in this third term. Plenty around the contest. Now a chance maybe. Good series of hand passes and the Dragons can get out of trouble. The kick OK. Marked by Paul Pratt on the wing. Grandstand side. So Paul Pratt with the footy. Smack bang into the middle. Finds Rody. He'll swing and go to a teammate and they're away. Ends up with uh, Jake McLean on the end of it. Ruff gave it to him. Inside forward 50. Max Ted sets himself. Found space. Gee. Found space. That's the kick though, John. Yeah. Allowed him to run onto it. Takes a mark and he'll line them up 25 out. Not much of an angle. I mean, he had two players, South Bendia players behind him and the kick was so good. He, all he had to do was stand his ground and run onto the football. It's beautiful delivery. Sandhurst uh, really looked good in this third term. Yeah, it was good through the middle too. They built up nicely. All of a sudden they found a target. Can he finish here? Maxted. He has a shot at goal. And jeez, <laughs> that's all the way. Good goal. The Dragons, that's five. Live score sponsor, Bendigo Bearings to Maxted. And jeez, he's come from nowhere since... Uh, Half time, he's providing a target. So it's 10 9 69, South Benigo 9 10 64, 15 minutes gone, third term. Put his name down, John. He might be in the running for our Jamaica Blue uh, voucher from the marketplace, uh, sponsor of that award uh, this afternoon, because uh, that was nice work. He's been dangerous in his third term. And the Dragons, uh, gee, they're breathing a bit of fire at the moment. 69 play the blood, 64, and we play 15 into the third term. Yeah, well, I thought most of the Dragons' problems in the first half were going inside forward 50. Now they look to be settling uh, that down a little bit. From the ball up, chance in the centre for the Dragons. Player took it, lost it in the tackle, loose ball, roadie through the traffic. No, in fact, it was Cooper Smith. He was tackled, lost it, goes again on hands and knees. He's locked up. They're all over the top of him, and the umpire will ball it up, still virtually in the centre of the ground. Three-quarter time, Morong 10-7-67. Uh, Timidi Emmo, 8-11-59. I picked this. Footy's a funny game, the kangaroos, kangaroo flat are coming. I'll update you very, very shortly. Oh, unbelievable. Which one did you pick? Well, I picked uh, Eagle Hawk. No, uh, I was talking about jockeys, he's picked everything. No, Morong. Morong's so, my only tip of the day. Rody. now he'll go forward. It's shallow. Poor kick. Oh. Here. Oh. oh, he just couldn't get it. Blair Holmes swoops on the footy over the top to Alex Wharton. Will it sit for him? Oh, it was a hurried, nervous handball to nobody in particular to advantage. They all dive in after the footy. 30 out from the goals for Sandhurst will have a ball up. Ball spending a lot of time in the Dragons uh, attacking 50 at the moment in this term. Yeah, the Dragons, oh, here really they come. Is. Good bodywork, Bloods by Will Allen. Another contest formed, five point margin, another ball They're up. Winning a lot of contested footy, the Dragons. They are. Let me tell you what's happening mm. at Kangaroo Flat. What's 66 happening? playing 79. Mm. So they are coming at Kangaroo Flat. 13 point margin. From the ball up, it's in the forward pocket for the Dragons, but coming away out of defence with good work is Van Heumann. He goes wide to the outer side, it's vacant, chases on. Dragons first there, and with numbers, work back to the big fella Hosking. He gets off a hand pass and it's kicked inside forward 50, poorly. Blood's defence stand up. They've got an opportunity, they move it further afield, and the mark is taken at defensive 50 by Oscar White. Goes to Hirley. He'll go dangerously corridor, but this is their game. It's going to be effective, and human might have been collared. Leg. Leg. You're right. In fact, it might be, uh, yeah. Well, there's no doubt about it. It was a trip. Free kick was that. Yeah. Into the middle we go. Oscar White. Good mark. Plays on quickly. 
Left footer. Oh, he's gone. Anto Antonowicz finds space again and takes a chest mark. Who's checking him? It's that fast. Legs movement of him. Sh goes goalward. It's going to be a goal. And bang, South Bendigo. Here they come again. They take the lead. Live score sponsor. That's his fourth live score sponsor. Bendigo bulk carpet. So uh, we've got a game on our hands here. 10 10 70, uh, that makes it 71, does it? 10-10-70 uh, to 10-9-69. One-point margin, 18 gone, third term. He loved it off the boot. Uh, he knew he kicked it straight away. He's missed two in this term, but he made sure of that one. He had some players breaking loose for him, and he just decided to drive it home, and he I, did. I reckon they were clearing the goal square for him because mm. there was no defender back when that thing bounced through. I think that was a very smart passage of play from the Bloods. From the ball up, centre of the ground, chance for the Dragons now. They trail by a point. Johnny said they'd win easy. Well, don't know. It's a tight game. Ball kicked laterally for the Dragons, marked by Cooper Smith. He's been good in the third quarter from the boundary wing. Goes up towards half forward, over the head of Skinny Wharton. The ball's trickled over the line and out of bounds to be thrown well, back into play. Well, we to half time. They need a finisher. Maybe they found one, Johnny. Yeah, oh, they found one. In this turn. Yeah. Oh, it's a free kick. It's a free kick to the Dragons. He showed signs, though, throughout the the game didn't he taken by Zimmer goes short gets a lead from the big fellow and he's on it is that him again yeah, yeah, it, Kobe Max did. it is he has been super today he's been the finisher yep he has kicked five so far and he's going to have a shot at goal player on the marks probably about 35 out and four maybe 10 in from the boundary is it a good spot to kick this a lot of goals kick from this angle now so Kobe Max did Lines it up and hits the post. It was a straight kick. Good kick. Yeah. The post was in the road. It was, it was a very good point. And that levels the scores up at 70 apiece again. 10, 10, 70, each of two. Uh, 20 minutes gone, third term. And that is a live score thanks to Bendigo Beer. Well, let's <laughs> move it quickly from fullback. They're on halfback now. They're looking to build something. Hurley, hurried handball, effective, over the top, finds Smith. Smith now down the line, looking for Antonowitz. Gee, Hurley's had a lot of footy this term. Yeah, he has. Antonowitz playing up the ground again. Probably 60 all around from goal. He runs back to the goal square and the umpire ball it in again. In the long shadows here, beautiful conditions for football. Good finish coming up here. We've got a compl uh, complete quarter to go after this one. <laughs> Thanks, well, Johnny. Yeah. It's called the fourth quarter. Yeah. As I'll just, I was trying to emphasise how much time we got left. Now we've got one out of bounds on the floor, and it'll be a free kick to no, Corby. That's good. Fights. That's good. <laughs> just in case we're going to call it off at three quarter time, Johnny. Yeah. Corby winning board to tag it. Who marks? Goes to the centre of the ground. McCaig's got it. A little bit of space. Goes long inside forward fifty for the Bloods. But the Dragons with numbers in defence. They've been pretty good in defence. They've answered most of the challenges. Wilkinson gets it wide. Finds a teammate. He kicks down the wing, and the mark is taken by. Uh... Can't pick that player on the far side. Who was that, Johnny? He took the mark. Kicked into the centre of the ground. Oh, it was dropped by Montague, who was an absolute sitter right off his chest. Now it's turned over. Chance for the Bloods. Back to the centre of the ground. They've got it down there through uh, Liam Byrne. Byrne goes long inside forward 50 for South. Flying across the front was Ireland. He couldn't take the mark. He's grabbed. Hits He's the deck. Gone, Umpire's blowing the whistle. Caught with the footy? Yeah. Caught with the football. 20 metres out directly in front. Free kick to South. Yeah, hey, good work, good tackling. That's what you want to see from your forwards. And he's just about to get to uh, boot the ball, but uh, tackle came. It was a strong tackle. I reckon a uh, good chance for the Bud to bring up another goal here. It's certainly kickable. Well, I don't know whether it's kick level or kick. Is it is it breathing space? One goal? Probably not. No, just just nudges you in front. Just a better position to be in. So in he comes, will kick, and that's it, kick, that's his second. And enough to put the Bloods back in front by that one straight kick. Live score, sponsor, Variety Superstore Strath Village, South Bendigo 11-10-76, Sandhurst 
10.70. Kind of footy you like to see, John. The ball's just going from one yeah. end to the other. Both teams are playing tacking football. And a lot of team, a lot, both teams have got players that are really lifted uh, in this game, in this uh, third term. Yeah, you feel like Bloods in particular in the last couple of minutes have really responded, haven't they? They've answered the call. Big finish here, Hosking. Taps it to Coglin. Coglin's tackled. Gets it back to Hosking. By hand. Tries to give it to Alec Wharton. Horrible handball. Oscar White intercepts. Now it's the Bloods. Leon. Handball. Back he goes. There's the old one-two to Liam Byrne. He goes by hand forward. Looking for Oscar White again. Couldn't quite find oh. He's tackled without the footy. Umpire called it. He's one, one of the players that have lifted to uh, Oscar White. Playing yeah. well for South Benigo. White. What's he going to do? He's looking towards the pocket. I don't like it when they kick it there. It's to nobody in particular. He comes off hands to the back of the pack. 40 out from goal. Lee Coughlin's in the area. Bloods. Oh, they'll win it. Hurry kick out of the pack to the hot spot. Now they're on. Antonowicz. No. Oh, Mark. I reckon he could juggle it. He has. Athletic as always. He was in the right spot. The Bloods hurried kick inboard and they'll have a shot at goal. So he missed one uh, similar spot. To going into half time uh, he's only 20, 20 metres out directly in front won't miss this he's a clever player we talk about him all the time but again uh, once that ball came in and I saw him there I knew he was going to mark it John what do I know it was a dead dead kick into that pocket and then all of a sudden it was alive through a hurried kick to the top of the square is this one, is this one breathing space Antonowicz well he needs to kick it for a start oh he has yep. bloods Extend the lead by two straight goals. That's his fifth. Live score sponsor, Bendigo Bolt Carpets. The Bloods now 12 10 82. Lead Sanders 10 10 70. We've gone 25 minutes in the third. Yeah, he's a clever player for we talk about it. And also our award this afternoon uh, at Jamaica Blue at the Marketplace. Jock, he's going to be hard to beat. He's a very clever player and a dangerous player as well. Well, he's having a shootout, isn't he, with Kobe Maxted. They've both kicked five and both been instrumental in their sides uh, staying alive and close in the contest. So it's back out to a two-goal uh, two ball game from the centre break. It'll go the way of the Dragons. Long kick inside forward 50 on the lead. Maxted couldn't take it. Wharton could. Skinny got it back to Maxted. Little dribbler along the boundary line. Tried to find a teammate. It's knocked over the line by the defence and out of bounds. And it'll be thrown back into play in the forward pocket. Dragons this time deep in attack. Kangaroo Flat still trail by 12 points. 12 points. Yeah, Golden Square. Throw in forward pocket for the Dragons. Over the back, chance down there for Oscar White, takes the foot, he's tackled to the ground. They wanted a high tackle, the umpire said no, and he'll ball it up, 40 out from the Dragons goal. Yeah, they attack, they trail by 12 points, only a couple of minutes remaining in this third term. Hosking wins the tab again, getting on the end of it is Noah Walsh. He had enough time, he looked up mm. and it was just, a, didn't get enough on it, comes off hands for a minor score. So. 71 playing 82, Dragons trail, 26 gone third term. He looked like he was in two minds, he didn't yeah. know where to go to the front of the goal square overshot and he sort of didn't either at the end of the day. Kick out wide's okay for the Bloods and they've got a mark in the back pocket right in front of the scoreboard which shows an 11 point margin in favour of South. 26 gone, third term. So closing on three quarter time, big kick, centre of the ground and that's a terrific mark taken down there for South. Smith. Smith, it is, yep. Alexander. Alexander. Yeah. Alexander the Great. Goes across the ground, finds Cooper Leon. He's taken the mark, always looking to do something. Now, runs around the player on the mark, kicks inside forward 50. Wasn't the best kick at the end of the day. Now the Dragons with numbers in defence should clear high towards the wing. Grandstand side. Maxted right up the ground, got over the top and thumped it over the line and out of bounds for a throw in. Been long quarters. Uh, they have, have most been. of this game. Uh, they've been ticking over towards 30, 31 minutes. Max, that's quickly becoming one of my boys. I think I'm going to claim him. <laughs> we're, um, oh, we're, I love him. We're, we're, we're racking up the overtime, Johnny. Yeah, we are. 11 point margin. Bloods. Hosking wins it again. Tap number 564. Feels like it. Lee Coglin held without the footy. Umpire didn't agree. Alex Wharton at the back at the bottom of the pack. Also for the Bloods, Oscar White. Unfortunately for both of you, we don't have uh, weekend rates. <laughs> no. uh, 
today. Oh, well, rates full stop. Probably the. Uh, oh no, you're, you're on a right. Uh, Hosking wins it, grabs it out of the air. Dragons attack. It'll go shallow inside forward 50. They've got time for another one if they can get uh, possession of the footy. Wilkinson, a rare possession. Alex Wharton, handball it was one, two, three. Coglin, oh he's lame. Have a look at him there, Wallace. Yes, Lee no. Coglin, not good as it comes towards the boundary line. Cooper Leon, back half. Keeps it in. Short pass. Kick. Builds to Brereton. He'll go in board. Bloods have got a chance here. Brock Harvey. Oh, oh. he's got two on. They've got the numbers here. All oh, fumbling footy. The Bloods, <laughs> he couldn't quite grab it. Poiser, it was nervous. He'll go into the hot spot. And a mark's been right. taken. We nervously got there. Alexander Smith will line them up for goal. Just directly in couldn't front. find the handle, John, of oh, the footy. Geez. But there was no one around, so he had plenty of time. Oh, didn't we feel nervous going through the middle of the ground then? But they're there, and they've got the chance to extend the lead. Oh, where they are? The Bloods. I'm liking what I'm seeing with them. They've shown yes. some resolve this afternoon. Geez, he's sucking in the big ones, Alexander Smith. The umpires should tell him to pick the footy up and kick it. I think he just did. Yeah. But uh, you're the right. The on him. That 30-second uh, clock they have in the RFL well and truly picked, uh, ticked over by now. Alex Smith. To the Barnard Street end. Distance won't be a problem. That'll be a good one for the Bloods to get. In the shadows of three-quarter time, it's a minus... Oh, he's kicked it! Yep. Jeez, he didn't like it. I was watching the player as he was a, he was a bit despondent, and then all of a sudden he started punching the air. So the Bloods go further ahead. Live score sponsor, Variety Superstore in Strath Village. A handy one for South Bendigo. Go to 13-10-88. They lead the Dragons 10-11-71. 29 gone third turn. Yeah, well, it just shaved inside the uh, goal post. So even the umpire had a good look at it. But um, uh, the Bloods in the goal square started jumping up pretty quickly. So no, he nailed it. Good build-up by South Bendigo, though. And it's a really good goal before. They kicked the goal. Uh, they've been pretty damaging late in term, South Bendigo, and on the scoreboard as well. Well, the Dragons, they got time to get one back before three-quarter time. From the ball up, there's a chance. Skinny Wharton in under the footy. Can't pick it up. Burn can for the Bloods. Throws it on the boot. Gains some territory up towards forward 50. Chase is on. Boundary line too close. It's over and out of bounds. And it'll be thrown in just outside the forward 50 for South Bendigo. Been a very interesting third quarter of football with both sides having their chances with the momentum of the game and kicking back-to-back uh, -back goals. But the Bloods at the moment are in front on the scoreboard by 17 points from the ball up. Oh, the big fellow, Hosking, was tackled with the footy, shrugged it off, threw it on the boot, kicked it just into the centre of the ground, loose ball, who will a bounce favour? Both got numbers there, chance for the Bloods, doesn't matter. Three-quarter time, it's an absolute beauty in the Graham Wright Memorial Cup, and it's still anybody's contest. South Bendigo at the last break, lead 13-10-88, Sandhurst 10-11-71. Let's go around the grounds for a fresh live update. Kangaroo Flat Trail, 10-13-73, Eagle Hawk. 15-7-97. At Gisborne v Castlemaine, Gisborne uh, 24-17-161. Castlemaine one behind. And at Golden Square, they're against the Meriburra Magpies. Golden Square 27-17-179. Maribara, one goal straight six. Round three, we're at the QEO for a big game at three-quarter time, and it's the Bloods leading at three-quarter time, 13-10-88 to Santos, 10-11-71. We play only local footy, only one Benigo radio station, Benigo's Fresh FM. From Central Victoria radio station.
Perhaps a close one here at the QEO, three quarter time. Graham Wright Memorial Cup here. South Bendigo, 13, 10, 88. They lead the Dragons, 10, 11, 71. Around the grounds, Golden Square, uh, thumping Maryborough, 29, 17, 191. Maryborough, one goal straight, six. Gisborne are thumping Castlemaine, 24, 17, 161 to one behind. And out at Kangaroo Flat, looks like an impressive effort by the Kangaroos. They trail, but it's 11, 13, 79. They trail the borough, 15, 7, 97. And continuing going around the grounds, 15 minutes into the final term, Midi Mo 10 Lead Moran, Jock Clark, 10 11 71. Thanks to Wayne Smith for that update. It's very, very close. Let's look at goal kicks the three quarter time. Two points. Mm. Come on, big They're fella. Coming back, Moran. Kane Robbins, come on, big fella. For the Bloods, the leaders, Caden Antonowitz has five to three quarter time. Brock Harvey, three. Will kick two. Singles to Alexander Smith and Oscar White and Tommy Brereton. And for the Dragons, Kobe Maxted's got five. Two to Joel Wharton. And singles, Noah Walsh, James Mattel and Zach Paul Pratt. Third turn, John was uh, played in two halves. Sanders seemed to get back into the game uh, in the first stages, uh, first part of that quarter. And then South Benio came back and hit hard towards the end of the quarter. That's uh, consolidated South's lead at uh, three-quarter time. Having said that, I'll say this, I don't think it's over yet, though. No. I'm not sure what will happen in the final turn. A lot to play out here, and we asked for somebody from Sanders to finish, and we found yes, somebody. You did. Kobe Maxted, kicking five, was providing a target and was excite excitement uh, plus up in the forward zone. Hamish Hosking continues to dominate in the ruck. Coming into the game, Cooper Smith nicely off half-back. Lockie Zimmer at times mm. across half-forward. And Joel Wharton was a little bit quieter in that term, but has had a three-quarter consistent game. Yeah. So, did I get you, boys? What, what you're saying is the third quarter was a quarter of two halves <laughs> with a quarter still to go. Yes. That's right. Yeah, we uh, got I'm it. I'm all over that. I got yeah. that. Yep. Uh, Chuck, what do you like about South Benigo in this game to three-quarter time? Uh, look, t to me... Uh, well, it's, it's just been their effort all over the ground. They've just they haven't played lazy football. They've been good. They've attacked the footy. They've, they've played like their season depends on setting up a good, solid base in this game today, and they're going about it in that same way. Everybody is chipping in and doing a little bit. You know, you've got your Antonowitz with five and Harvey's kick three, etc. So, but look, so they've McCaig, got eight, eight between them? Uh, yes. Al Alexander Smith... Um, Cooper Leon's been terrific. Liam Burns has been great. Oscar White. All around the ground, they've got blokes that have lifted, I reckon. And their back line, too. Uh, players get back there like Taggart and players like that. I think they've done pretty well in the back half as well. We see them uh, perform pretty well at the QER, but... I tell you something, it's uh, anyone's game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, at three-quarter time. South have played some really good football into this game, but they're not over the line yet. Sanders hit back hard in that turn. And it'll be uh, an exciting final quarter. I hope you can stay with us uh, coming up. Let's get the final term underway. It's the Bloods 88. It's the Dragon 71. This is John Hunter. Hosking will do the ruck work for Sanders. He's done it all day. The Bloods have found this ability to bounce when they're under pressure. Hosking just won the tap. It wasn't to advantage. Bloods, they'll push forward. Long hurried kick out of the middle. Shallow inside forward 50. But uh, good strong mark contested by Harrison Free. Of the Dragons, he'll swing it wide. Out of side to Alex Wharton. Chess mark. Handball, Noah Walsh. Dragons running. Short pass to half forward. Oh, it's good. Good mark, good mark it was. That's Maxted. Yep. My man. He goes now. <laughs> hurriedly to the top of the goal square. It's one on one. Back of the pack. No mark. It's Wilkinson. Couldn't get his hands on it. Did well. He did a, a strong tackle in the goal square. In fact, it was a little bit over Zalas. In the back. And in the back. And Isaiah Miller will get a free kick for the Bloods. i tell you what. Cooper Leon just put the afterburners on to make 20 metres to just put the Sanders bloke off having an easy run at that mark contest before. He's a smart footballer as well as a talented one. The kick out clears defence of 50. Up they go. No one could take the mark. Bloods throw it on the boot hurriedly towards the boundary lines. Kicked off the ground. They gain 20 metres and it's over and out of bounds to be thrown back into play. That's a common sense rule. <laughs> as it should be because he was under the pump so the ball to be thrown back in on the wing out of side of the ground started the final term and it's the bloods in front by 17 points both these sides have no points boys on the uh, 
on the ladder at this stage, and we'll be looking no for wins. their first win today. No wins. No wins. None. Mm. From the throw in, chance down there for Rody. Kick across his body inside forward, 50 for the Dragons, plenty up. No one could take the crumbs. Chance down there for Skinny Wharton, throws it on the boot towards goal out of bounds. On the full, penalty free kick to the Bloods' last line of defence. I'll play on quickly. On the end of it, there's Poiser. Poiser will go over the top. Van Heumann, short pass, Brock Harvey, <clears throat> probably chopped his arms. Umpire let it go. It was actually good defensively by Harrison Free. Now it goes over the boundary line. Dragons asking for a free kick. It was a free kick. Well, they he kicked one? it into the South Plaza's leg and it bounced off and went over the line. Well, umpire said, well, ball it in, so we'll stick with that. Yep. Through centre wing. That's what it's all about. Broadcast side, in front of the grandstand. Umpire hurls it in. 81, 88 playing 71. Blood's lead. They'll go forward again. Leon. Oh, he's collared. Good strong tackle, Cooper Smith, Dragons, wins possession of the footy for them. Rody, also Walsh offers support. Hurry kick to Ruff, in fact it was McLean. McLean, a left footer to half forward, emerging with the footy is Cooper Smith. He'll go inboard. Oh, good strong defensive mark. Again, Bloods, and that gives them the chance to clear. Wasn't that a good mark? Good hands, he was under the pump. Maxted came at it, tried to thump it Miller. away. Miller, that man was. <coughs> Isaiah? Yep. So Miller from the back pocket for the Bloods now has a little bit of a gallop. Kicks it high to the wing, grandstand side. No one can take the mark. Through and taking the crumb is Will McCaig. He's locked up in a tackle, lost it. Ball spills free. Nobody can get it effectively. Loose ball picked up by Bailey Hall for the Bloods. He's lost it in a tackle also. Plenty of numbers around the contest. Boys get a little bit excited and the umpire comes in and says, give it to me and I'll ball it up. Yeah, you mentioned Miller. He's been a good player. Yeah, he's he's good. strong. He's strong at a contest and uh, can take a good overhead mark as well. So ball up between wing and half forward for the Dragons. And the umpire's picked out whistle. a free kick as a whistle and it's going to go to the Dragons. Neither player knew who no, was the big to. fella. The, the umpire wasn't him. sure either. He put left hand, then he went right. He's got the free kick and will drive the Dragons inside forward 50. Oh. Max did. Went up. Came straight out of his chest, bounced off like a rubber man. Loose ball now, just on forward 50 for the Dragons. South player tackled, lost the footy. South are uh, under the pump in defence. Dragons pressing home, taken by Skinny Wharton. Kicks through the traffic, can he find a teammate? He can't. Blood's defence, they throw it onto the boot. It's a big, long, oh, wild kick, and it's gone over and out of bounds on the full. Penalty free kick for the Dragons, they'll come again. Yeah, he had a loose player there too, but uh, too much on the footy. He sailed over that player's head and uh, out of bounds on the full. Noel Walsh now have the free kick from that uh, out of bounds on the full. It's just a little bit of a short pass. He's picked out a player. It might be Max Dead again. He's taken a chess mark. In fact, it's uh, not Max Dead. It's Lockie Hood, who's been relatively quiet today. He found space. So Lockie Hood. She's a big good kick from there. He's right up against the boundary line. Distance won't be a problem. In front of the South Social Rooms. 17 point margin. They trail. It's a long, strong kick and it's a goal. Oh, what a ripping goal under pressure at this time of the game. Just what the doctor ordered for the Dragons. Live score sponsor, Bendigo Bulk Carpets. So Sanders go to 11-11-77 to South Bendigo, 13-10-88. Five gone last term. Yeah, we've seen some really good goals kicked here this afternoon, and uh, that was Hood's goal. That was a magnificent kick. I could just think when you said in front of the South Social Rooms, there were plenty in there not supporting that kick, uh, John. No, you would have got a bit of advice, you'd imagine, wouldn't you? But a uh, magnificent shot at goal. So the Dragons not done yet. Back to 11 points. Ball up, centre of the ground. Kick out of the uh, middle. Favours the Bloods. Towards half forward. No one can take the mark. Pack developed. South player took it. Oh, he was thrown to the ground just as he tried to get a hand pass away. That was Byrne and the umpire's going to ball it up. 23 gone in that big game, Jock. Morong 77, Midi 74. Yeah, wow, well, Golden Square 217, Meriborough 6. Yeah, keep us up to date with that one, Johnny, because we, we need to know what uh, the final result is. So are in front, Jock. 77 plays 74, <coughs> 23 gone in that game. Meanwhile, here at the Queen Elizabeth Oval, the ball's knocked over the line and out of bounds to be thrown back into play on the wing in front of the grandstand. Blood's in front by 11 points. 
Six gone, final turn, plenty of time from the throw in. No one can take it effectively. South player, grab without the football, he'll take the free kick. That'll be Michael Hurlihy, right on the wing in front of the grandstand. And there's plenty in that grandstand, too. Having a look at a good game of footy this afternoon, Hurlihy's kick goes short, finds a teammate. Probably still on the wing, grandstand side, looking to set something up. Gets plenty of leads. Eventually it's long, high, inside forward 50, straight onto the chest of Isaac Ruff, and the Dragons will defend. He goes short pass to Hosking. On half back, handball, Harrison free. Dragons, they'll go forward to half forward, looking for O'Farrell to the back of the pack, whistle on play. They're both looking Ooh, at uh, South free kick. It'll be Van Heumann. They both went for the footy. O'Farrell was uh, also there. Bloods have it on half back. Van Human short pass. Finds Leon on the wing. Up and under kick. Effective. Allowed his teammate to run onto it. Looking to build here into the forward zone. Calling for it. For a player to run. Does. Just spotted up nicely. Bloods moving it. Taking a mark was Will Allen. Sam Langley kicked at him, but they're coughing it up now. Dragons across half back. Ended up with Lockie Hood. He goes to the opposite back pocket. <coughs> Alex Wharton on the boot. He'll be looking for it's Wilkinson. Wilkinson now. Still on half back. Into the middle. Montague will take a mark. Looking to build. He's looking around. He's got a player running for him. It's Layden. Marty Layden takes a chest mark. He's out. He'll go into the pocket. He's got a lead. Honours it. Poor kick. Zimmer. Oh. Had to work. There's no way known he could have got to it. Over the line. And in front of the social rooms for South Bendigo. We'll have a ball in. 88 playing 77. I thought the, the Dragons might have used up their uh, petrol tickets in that third term. They came from a long way back and worked hard. But uh, they're full of run at the moment. You get the impression it's, it's still back to a... Uh, arm wrestle don't you mm. so there's the throw in deep in the forward pocket for the dragons chance for the bloods defense they throw it on the boot make about 20 meters out of the danger zone ball rolls over the boundary line and out of bounds for another throw in so let's have a look eight and a half minutes gone in a final term and it is a live score sponsor variety superstore strap village 13 10 88 south bendigo 11 11 77 sandhurst it's a ball in, across half forward. The building again here, the Dragons. They, you feel like you, they need to get a couple in a row quickly. That's another stoppage. Ball big, up. Big Hoskin, one of your favourite players, Johnny. Yep. Can't see any grabs the tackle and he throws him to the ground. How would you like that? He's in, the he's in the stable too, don't you worry. I'll pick all the good ones. That. Left half forward, well, Hoskin wins the tap again. Not to advantage. We'll have another stoppage. Three in a row. A little bit of by play going on. In fact, there's a better free, free kick. kick better free kick. Dragons. Hacked. It's Lockie Hood again. He'll go in board. He'll set himself back of the pack. Max dead. Overrun it. Then he won it. It was a little bit of a dinky kick. Van Heumann under pressure. Zimmer. Ooh. Good tackling. Dragons. Won't be rewarded. No prior opportunity. 15 <laughs> metres out in front. No prior. So it's 11 point margin. South Benigo lead. 10 minutes. It's gone. Well, so you time. talk about umpires, but I reckon they've done a great job today. Yep. Haven't panicked. Paid the ones that had to be paid. Ball up. spot on, that was. 15, yep. 15 metres out from the Dragons' goal. They trail by 11 points. I reckon they kick the goal. Are they a free and kick? No, it's free kick. Yeah. It's a free kick. Well, he was tackled, uh, Joel Wharton, and he threw his hands up like to say, I didn't have the footy umpire. And the umpire said, OK, I'll give you a free kick. <laughs> Oh, that's the way it went down. Don't worry about that. Is that is that, is that dissent, Johnny? No. Well, it was. He agreed with him. It was actually friendly. Wasn't no, it? I was just describing what took place. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So Wharton, 20 metres out, 45 degree angle, comes oh, in and hits man. the stick. Justice. Oh, and the bloods dodge another bullet. So the margin back to 10 points. 13, 10, 88 bloods. 11, 12, 78 Sandhurst. Ten minutes gone, final term. Miller will kick in duties for the Bloods. He hasn't got a lot on offer. Eyes are darting. Now he plays on. He has a bounce after about two steps. Didn't need to. Then kicks it beyond 50. He kicked it to a pack. Will they win possession? Bloods. Yeah, Bloods will get it. It was a good bit of work through Alexander Smith. 
to the wing. Leon, for oh. a bit of a don't argue. Let Runs his measure. Go. One bounce. He's looking inboard. Handballs forward. He'll receive it back. It was the oh. old one too. And it was mucked up. But he's good enough. Wins it again. Now he's got to go high and long. He had no one to go to. He didn't really look. Isaac Rough Dragons takes an intercepting mark. Oh, they were on there and his teammates handballed it behind Big him. Big Will Allen, Will I think. Allen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Unfortunate. Ruck, what did they say? Ruckman shouldn't handball. Well, no, they should. Oh, should they? All right. Meanwhile, the bloods can come again from just outside forward 50. It's a high kick towards full forward. Whistle on play. Umpire's picked out a free kick. Against St. Thomas. He's got him in the back. Went early. Go to the Dragons. Last line of defence. They play on. road. He's got it in the back pocket. And an absolute paddock. So he wrongs, uh, runs on. Looks for uh, options. Kicks it to the centre of the ground. Oh, South Park. Should have taken the mark. Allen again. Miller. Missed the mark. In fact, it wasn't. It was Isaiah Miller. Chance for uh, Rody. He went without the football. Burn works hard on hands and knees. Gets it out. Skinny Wharton's in there. Pushed it over to a teammate who takes it. Throws it on the boot. That was Paul Pratt. Gets it up towards half forward. Bounced over the line. And it bounds for a throw-in. Just outside forward 50 for the Dragons. One South Bendigo player doesn't want to get defeated today, Cooper Leon. If you look at him, uh, he's doing everything he possibly can to get a victory for South Bendigo. God, he's got a big tank. Bloods by 10. Oscar Hoskin wins the tap for the Dragons to the front of the pack. Tries to find Coughlin, who's back on the ground, and we did observe him getting some work around the groin and uh, hamstring area a little earlier, so he's just found a little bit to come good. Across half forward. Dragons attack. Long shadows. Hosking, front position, wins it. Rody sharks it, picks it up on the left, goes in board. A hurry kick. They've got the numbers. Picks up by Max Ted. Umpire let it go. Hurry kick by the Bloods. Zach Hare. And on the end of it, there's that man, Leon. He'll now go, go long. Oh, it was smothered off the boot. Good work, Wharton. We'll have a ball in across half forward for the Dragons. Once again, Daniel Johnson's mm. applied a really good tackle. Great pressure back there for South Bendigo. So the ball to be thrown back in just outside, forward 50 for the Dragons, they trail by 10 points, up goes the big fella Hosking, wins one down, got it to a teammate, throwing it on the boot and having a shot at goal, Paul Pratt was pushed as it hit the boot and the mark was taken in the back pocket by the Bloods defence. Johnson. Johnston again was it? Yeah. They'll work it wide and they've got a mark just inside defence of 50, so South Bendigo. Maybe just slowing the game down a fraction at the moment. Then back across goal. Back to Johnston. The big fella takes the mark. Looks further afield. He's got a player out down there. And that's Smith. That's His just kick a was bad poor. kick. Chopped off by the Dragons across the ground. And the mark has been taken. Cooper Smith, I reckon it is. Cooper uh, Smith. I'm not sure why they were thinking South. They went out wide and then they brought it back in a uh, two-on-one contest. Just bad footy in the end. And two, and two like they brought it back into the middle, yeah. inside for defensive 50. Two against one. Uh, I'll tell you what, Daniel Johnson's been a good player for the Bloods last line of defence today. So Cooper Smith from uh, 45 metres out, almost directly in front, skips, runs to the right, unloads and has kicked a point. And a margin back to nine points. 13-10 the Bloods, 11-13 the Dragons, 14 gone, final term. Miller will kick in Barnard straight in for the Bloods. He's got nothing off, on offer. Oh, he's starting again. He'll go short down the guts and find Taggart. Taggart of the Bloods will now go backwards to the back pocket in order to go forward. So they're looking to build here in the back zone. As they do, their game style, we've discussed the Bloods. It's a long kick beyond 50. Strong marks being taken. Pell Pratt by the Dragons. One on one. Two kicks out from goal. Will look to come inboard. Finds Ruff. Ruff had moved back to the wing. Now a short pass, he's got Montague on. It's too severe for him. Inside forward 50 now. On the end of a handball, Jake McLean dropped it for the Dragons, but was good enough. Gave it by hands to Rody. Rody by hands to Shirt. Back to Pell Pratt. 70 out. Steps around the player. He'll now go long to the goal square. It's wide. They'll set themselves to the back of the pack. Strong mark. It's been taken by the Bloods and they'll clear defensively. Short pass and give it to Miller. 
Terrific defence from the Bloods. They're under the pump a little bit at the moment. They clear down the wing, out of side. Ball goes to the back. Should be the numbers with the Dragons as Alex Wharton picks it up. Handball inside's OK. Now they go back inside forward. 50, loose ball, radio chance. Good crumbing. Finds a teammate. Little pass towards half forward. Just too much mm. on it. The Bloods stand up and they'll get out of trouble again. Good work. Long kick towards Cooper Lee on at half forward. Missed him. Didn't get there. Dragons cut it off. Chance down there for Cooper Smith to take it. Turns on the left foot. Goes down the wing grandstand side. Finds a teammate to mark. He's taken down there by Jake McLean. He wastes no time. Plays on. Little kick. Good mark. James Mattel. Too far out for him though. Goes to the hot spot. Marking contest. Body work. All done. All good. South with the crumb at the back. Well read. Long kick to half back. Dragon mark. They'll come again. So the player taking it. Down there, off. moving inside to the big fellow, Hosking. Could he unload a bomb? Hosking. Well, he sort of does. Kicks at 55 to the hot spot. Marking contest. Umpire's picked out a free kick. It'll go to south. Well, they're under pressure down there, aren't they, the uh, Bloods? Yeah, they're hanging on. They are. Dragons are coming. Long kick by the Bloods beyond uh, forward uh, 50. Will Allen tried to get his hands on it, couldn't, then won it. Handball over the top, or they'll raffle it. Ends up with Liam Byrne, who's been good. In board. They're away here, the Bloods. Long kick by Brereton. Inside oh. forward 50. Good, strong body work. Isaac Ruff got upended off the ball by Antonowitz, and he ended up taking a mark. Like, pretty just, simply. I reckon he's just cramped, isn't he? I reckon he, he cramped, did he? I, I reckon there's a bit of body work in there, and there's a bit of both, but... Um, the end result was Antonowitz was by himself, 30 out from goal, <laughs> almost directly in front. They just need to steady the ship here. Well, considering Sanders, the Dragons had most of their ball in their uh, fourth 50 in this quarter. South get a goal here. He's had a couple of opportunities to ice the game at different times, Antono uh, Antonowitz. Oh, it's a stuttering approach. I don't like it. But it's a goal. <laughs> he liked it. Yeah, well, I didn't like the stutter. It was just a little bit at the end, but um, he straightened himself up. Around, he never, he was. never deviated at all. No. Just, uh, that's his seventh. He it? said, let's muck, let's muck around and do a stutter <laughs> for goal. Life's core sponsor, Bendigo Bearing. South Bendigo, 14 10 94. Sandhurst, 11 10. Uh, 11 10. Is that a number? 11 13 79. 18 gone. In March, that um. big game out at the Loddon Valley Jock Battle of the MM, thanks to Wayne Smith. Smith, it's all over. Jock Clark, you tipped. Who did you tip? Morong. Morong, 74. Uh, Morong, 89. Midi, 74. Oof. Morong have won. More the, details uh, after the, the final Panthers siren. The have got up in the yes. big one in the Loddon Valley League. Unbelievable. Ball up, centre of the ground. Well, Dragons need another one. They need it probably pretty soon. Our post picked out a free kick in the centre of the ground. It'll go to the Dragons. Hand pass goes wide. Taken by Free. Runs his measure. Has to get rid of it in a hurry. Does to a teammate. Kick inside forward 50 for Santos. No one could take the mark. It's 40 metres out. Blood's defence. Battling hard. Battling strongly. Umpire's picked out a free yes. kick. It's going to the Dragons. Brody. 40 metres out directly in front of Pyre said somebody what threw the ball. Yep. <clears throat> Fair enough. He's closer than me. So Rody now Rody, Jeremy Rody is normally a pretty good kick. Yep. So if he can handle the pressure, this is one he'd probably kick eight times out of ten at training. But it's a big game and his side needs it. And he needs to kick the goal and he has kicked the goal and the margin now comes back to nine points so the bloods hang in but the challenge by no means finished live score sponsor bendigo bulk carpets and it's south bendigo 14 10 94 uh, sandhurst 12 13 85 final uh, quarter 20 minutes gone all right uh, so final score in that game are on 13 11 89 to bitty mo 10 14 74 Let's go around the grounds to Kangaroo Flat, 12, 16, 88. The flat, Eagle Hawk, 17, 8, 110. So good work by the uh, young Kangaroos outfit as the ball is in the middle. It's uh, contested and won by Noel Walsh. Received a handball wide to Alex Wharton. Out of side wing, swing poolside. Dragons look to build something here. Over the top, 
Handball forward. It's effective to Jake McLean. Jake McLean goes short, shallow inside forward 50. Good defensive work of Will Lee. But the safety of numbers are with the Dragons. Wilkinson on the end of it. Couldn't grab it. Tried to grab it one-handed. Bloods. They've got the numbers now. Max Ted's in the area. So is Torby of the Bloods. Oh, fumbling footy. Isaiah Miller couldn't grab it. Now it's the Dragons. Win possession. Noah Walsh. Handball. Montague to Joel Wharton. Will go round the body and kick a... Touched. Nothing touched. Jeez, good build up. Dragons. So 86 Dragons, 94 Bloods, 21 gone, final turn. Had a couple right on the goal line, the Bloods. Yeah, and, this... and he had to kick around the corner. He didn't qu didn't really get uh, enough traction to go deep, uh, Joel Wharton, that time. Eight point ball game, 21 and a half gone, final term, Bloods in front. I'd nearly say hanging on, would you think? Yeah, they're hanging on. That's Long kick, clears defensive 50, plenty up, no one can take the mark. That the Dragons win possession, they'll come again. High kick, up to the hot spot, plenty of flyers, nobody could bring down the grab. At the front of the pack, Montague takes it, his left foot kick went high in the air, it wasn't very straight. Mark by Johnson, last line of defence for the Bloods. He wastes no time. He kicks wide to the wing, out of sight of the ground, and through the middle now the Bloods bring it. They've got some numbers. Kicked long, inside forward 50, bouncing ball. Ireland's under the pump. He's being worn like an absolute glove. And Tonowitz is there, 20 metres out from the south goal. Nobody can win it effectively. Umpire's letting him play. Ball up. Pack develops, and the umpire will take charge. Ooh. There, the ball came forward. South had a couple of breaking through, but they just couldn't find the target. So uh, it's in a dangerous spot, though, for Dragons. Yeah, the Bloods attack. Final score coming through at Wade Street. I'll give that to you shortly as Montague gives it to, to Coughlin. Back to McLean. He'll run his measure. Oh, he tries a torp. He tried to what barrel. Was what was he doing there? And he's kicked it straight to the opposition in the Bloods, and they'll take a mark on the wing. So final score at Wade Street. Golden Square 36 19 235 to Meriburra 25 17. Bloods now in the middle. Hare has got the footy. It received a mark. Now he'll look to go long, strong, down the middle he goes. He's got a lead on. On it. Oh, crashing packs there. Free with the footy now for Sanders. Good, strong tackle. Bloods. That's Brock McLean. And we'll have a ball up. 94 playing 86. Bloods lead, 24 minutes gone, final turn. Well, if this is like the last two quarters, boys, you'd reckon there's still probably five, eight, well, yeah, five to six minutes yeah, to go. From the ball up, Lee Coughlin takes it. Good hands. Out to Skinny Wharton, who just throws it on the boot. Poor kick, straight onto the chest. But they, uh, Bloods have set a bit of a wall across the centre, and they take control, although that kick's wide. <laughs> In fact, it was a tired kick from Torpy. He wanted to find his teammate down there, Poiser, and it just went out in front of him and bounced over the line and out of bounds. Yeah, most quarters have uh, touched uh, 30. 30 minutes, yeah. uh, 24 gone. Well, the uh, final score at Gisborne as well, as we're on the wing. Umpire's picked out a free kick. It'll go to the Bloods. So Gisborne, 34-21-225. Castlemaine, two behinds. Which will be a long time since the side hasn't scored a goal in a game of Bendigo footy, wouldn't they? Is that chalky to boil always in a week for Donnie Moran is. and the boys? Uh, well, worst possible outcome, let's be honest, as it goes inside forward 50. Isaac Ruff, Dragons, takes a mark. He's got a player on, Noel Walsh, by hands. They'll look to build. Free for the Dragons to half forward. He's got a player breaking for him. Rody steps and go. Oh. Handballs out to Pole Great Rat. Oh. Soccer's off the ground. Free kick will be awarded. Might be 50. 50. Uh, 50. Yep. To answer that question, John, I reckon it was last year. It was against Storm, and I think it was the stage where uh, Melbourne players couldn't come up at all. And I reckon Saint, uh, Storm uh, defeated Castlemaine without scoring. Right. Well, there you go. Well, it wasn't long ago at all. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to come up in 1865 or something like that. But no. no. There you go. Um, I think the best Castlemaine would have been hoping for would be go down to Gisborne and be competitive. Well, that certainly hasn't happened. Not a long 50, but... Uh, player taking a long time to <laughs> come up to the mark as you would that's why we're having long quarters isn't it mucking around johnny yeah well there is a bit of mucking around get on with it you haven't been happy with them uh taking too long with the footy at stage yell, yell out johnny yeah. get on with it yeah get on with it 
I mean, we've got a good game of footy on our hands. It's not over. So Johnson now for the Bloods. Goes deep within forward 50, but it's to nobody. It's going to be a rebound here by the Dragons. Short pass to half back. What Wharton. He gets it by hand yes. to Walsh. One bounce through the middle. Two bounces. He's building. Walsh will now go long inside forward 50, looking for Rody. But oh. Isaiah Miller for the nice. Bloods intercepts and takes a good bar. Just, Just out good game. Yes. The kick wasn't to the advantageous side for Rody on that occasion. So the Bloods go short, as they often do. With a little toe poke pass and they've got it in the back pocket still. Long kick this one. Down the wing, out of side, plenty up. No one could complete the mark. South player took the ball to the ground and about three Sandhurst players jumped on top of him and the umpire will ball it up. Miller and Johnstone are being really good players, uh, defenders for South Benigo this afternoon. 26 minutes right. gone. Final turn, eight points the margin, South in front. Inside forward, 50 goes for South Bendigo. They've got another chance here. Le it's out. No. Oh, repelling now for the Dragons. It's good work through Lockie Murdoch. He'll go to the outer side wing. Oh. Oh, something off the ball. Leon Byrne wins it again for the Bloods. He's done well to a teammate. Short pass. That's ineffective. 70 out from goal now. Running through was rough. He did well to Coglin. Coglin, don't argue. Final score final score. I thought the quarter would have went a lot longer. Doesn't matter. There's some happy Bloods players out there. Final score here. 14-10-94. The Bloods have defeated Sanders. 12-14-86. By how many is that? It's uh, 8 points, is it? Uh, 8 12. points, John, yeah. yes. 8 points. Yeah, yep. there's uh, less goals kicked in that final turn, but we've been touching uh, 30 minutes most of the other quarters, but what an entertaining game and a great win for the South Benigo Football Club. I think it's been a while, Jock, before they can get, since they've had their hands on the Graham Wright Memorial Cup, but they do this afternoon in round three of Benigo Football. Yeah, and well deserved. I think they hit the deck really wanting to make amends for a poor performance last week, and that they did. They had some good players and some talented players that stood up, but at the end of the day, I just felt it was the attitude of South this afternoon. They really wanted this this win, and they all put in. Everybody chipped in and did their bit. When they needed to stand up, they all did. I'm uh, pleasantly surprised. I yeah. think I think it uh, says a lot if you think about the game when they got off to that really good start. So when they kept yep. the first three goals, for example, uh, which uh, at the end when there's only eight points of difference, uh, Sanders were playing catch up footy. I saw something different in the Bloods today. In that, in years gone by and games put gone by, when teams have challenged them, they haven't been able to rebound and bounce. And I felt like today when they were challenged and they needed to bounce, they did. Yep, they looked like uh, they were ready to play yep. very early in this game and yep. uh, they had to maintain that because they were challenged right throughout uh, yep. this afternoon and uh, to Santa's credit, I reckon they had a couple of players a little bit proppy as well, but uh, gee, they were in the contest. In fact, Jock uh, wouldn't have been uh, surprised to see them win uh, this game in the end, but uh, Bloods hang on and the Cup's coming home. The Graham Wright Memorial mm. Cup is coming home to the Bloods. And there's nothing wrong with that. He was a, a stalwart of South Bendigo, and the cup with his name on it will uh, be pride of place with the Bloods for at least the next 12 months. I mean, after the game, you have a look at uh, teams. Uh, normally, uh, they're pretty stuffed, Johnny, but they're really stuffed. Uh, both teams are ran hard this afternoon in really good conditions in round three. And it was South Bendigo, 14-10-94, defeated Sanders, eight points the margin, 12-14-86. And a featured game in the Loddon Valley, we thank Wayne Smith for his work this afternoon as well. Jock was keen on the Morong in this game, the battles of the M&Ms, and it was Morong in the end, 13-11-89, mini MO, 10-14-74. Yes, and uh, final scores down at uh, Wade Street, Golden Square, won easily against Maribyrnong, 36-19-235. Golden Square to Maribyrnong at 2-5-17. Down at Gisborne, Castlemaine did not score a goal. They were two behinds, have been defeated 34-21-225. So collectively, what we've got, Magpies being beaten by 70 goals in the league this afternoon. And at uh, Kangaroo Flat, competitive it looks like. Maybe Eagle Hawk have kicked away a little in the end. 29-20. 
9129 to Kangaroo Flat 121688. Well, the Magpies come off uh, 2110 last week, so they might have uh, got a bit tired last week, John, and yeah. uh, couldn't match it this week. But yeah, some uh, lopsided games, although uh, Kangaroo Flat were in that game right up until three quarter time against Steagle Hall. Obviously, without being there, it looks like it would have been that one of those games where a young team have had a crack and probably towards the end. Run out of legs. Run out of legs. It, that's, uh, yep. that's good. But um, it's not a final score, but it must be very, very close to the final score. But the jo other two Magpie scores are final scores. Yeah, Jock, your thoughts uh, on this contest this afternoon? Terrific contest this afternoon. Both went in knowing they had to really have a win to get their season started. And South, after a couple of lacklustre performances, particularly last week when they got steamrolled by Eagle Hawk in the uh, second half of the game, really came out and attacked the contest. I thought they were terrific. Yeah. Cooper Leon's great player stood up. You know, Caden Antonowitz, great player, stood up with, what, six goals this afternoon. But everybody else played their part. Yep. I thought it was, I'll tell you who I thought was terrific this afternoon, was Liam Byrne. Yes. He was in, he was in absolutely everything and uh, had plenty of support from the likes of Hurley, Harvey's kick three, um, Oscar White, um, Alexander Smith. They stood up when they had to. Daniel Johnson in defence was pretty good. Isaiah well, Miller. Yeah. And they were put under pressure plenty of times, weren't they? Sandhurst issued the challenge quite a number of times and they were able to hold off. So I reckon that's not only a win today, that's kick-started the blood season, I reckon. Yeah. And, look, not taking anything away from the Bloods, <coughs> Lee Coughlin's not quite right. And, um, surprisingly, I thought Blair Holmes wasn't his usual self in his 200th in the... He was good early in patches, but in that back half of the game, I, I didn't feel like he had the influence that he usually has. No, and he and he spent most of the last quarter on the bench. Yeah, and Liam Island as well up back. He, he had a relatively quiet game. So um, you can take positives out of games that uh, you lose as well. So they'll, they'll rebound again next week. But a lot to like for Sandhurst from a losing perspective. Uh, I, I just love what, they've, what they're offering up uh, in the ruck at the moment with Hamish Hosking. Rucks all day. Rucked all day last week. Is winning tap, tap out all over the ground so uh, they've, they've got a lot of positives I'll tell you what I like uh, about the footy uh, right through the three rounds the three games we've done is uh, the standard of uh, Major League Footy in Benigo um, right. you, you can talk about uh, uh, footy but you need in Centre Victoria you need your Major League to stand yeah. up and be a strong competition and the games that we've witnessed this year uh, there is some certainly Major League football uh, taking place it feels like it's taken another step from uh, I know we had the district a couple of seasons but since we've had some decent footy in the last few years this to me seems to have gone a step up and what we mean by that is the skill level of the players yes. and the speed of the game you notice the transition the of the game, football the speed yeah. this year i believe our teams are playing very attacking football and one thing i notice about south bendigo compared to uh sandhurst golden square and the storm sand uh the Bloods have got their own game style compared to the other three. The other three are similar, and the Bloods uh, are a little bit different. They, they play that possession game up half, uh, in the back half, and then once they find a space, they go, and they seem to find players in front of the ball after that, and it's working for them. So uh, it'll be interesting to see as the season progresses which style of football uh, really comes to the front. Uh, we get to have a look at Gisborne. It'll be interesting to see what their style is like. Well What's done it? to Sanders, Jock, because yeah. the presentation has just taken yeah. place and on the both ground. sides out there. And Sanders stayed around right until the uh, presentation. Oh, well, that, that's as you'd expect. Graham Wright Memorial <laughs> Cup. As, as you'd expect from a uh, respectable, well-run uh, club. But South forced into that... Uh, game style to be somewhat to be honest because they're a small side yeah well that's but no right. big tools but it's definitely a style that's been implemented and it's probably taken the coach um nathan horbury a couple of years to implement it and not mentioning nathan horbury i can't recall really calling him in the second half of the game i know he was under a, an injury cloud he wasn't the out there John. wasn't out there John. wasn't out there well there, uh, there you go uh, so, had, had you have called him <laughs> I, call, I called him early though yeah yeah, yeah, yeah first yeah. half yeah. All right, just to repeating the final score, Morong today, 13-11-89, have defeated Midi MO 10-14-74, Grenfell kicked three goals, Johnson got two, Taylor two for Morong, Matthews three for Midi MO, Grant two and Turner two, so a big victory to Morong this afternoon. Yeah, well done Link Jacobs and the Morong Panthers. I'll tell you what, just quickly, boys, thinking about it, what's mm -hmm. going to change dramatically after today's round of footy is the goal-kicking ladder 
you'd imagine there's some big bags obviously would have been kicked at Golden Square in Gisborne. Yeah, oh wow, yes, exactly. Because they both kicked 30, very, over 30 very, goals. Very interesting. So, um, yeah, it's not good to see. A, we don't want to dwell on the negatives. Uh, we've talked about the positives of the league, but to see those two Magpie teams getting beaten by that margin. And uh, ironically, Castlemaine are above Sandhurst on the ladder. Go figure that. Um, we've got a final score coming through from Eagle Hawk. It looks like Eagle Hawk have kicked away a little bit, uh, which is probably a little disappointing because they look like they were. Not for Eagle Hawk fans, no, John. No, but just for, um, <laughs> to see. Uh, I'm talking about young teams up and coming and uh, having an effort. But 21-11, 137, Eagle Hawk. That's a final score against Kangaroo Flat, 12-16, 88. And those two Magpie scores, it was 34-21, 2-2-5, Gisman defeated Castlemaine, two behinds. And Golden Square, 36-19, 2-35, have defeated Maryborough, 2-5, 17, final score. Now, I've got a uh, final score in the game between uh, Newbridge and the YCW, and we always say thanks to Wayne Smith. I'm going to say thanks to Joel Peterson uh, this time for uh, this update. Well, there is at Newbridge. I'm sure he was. Newbridge have uh, defeated uh, YCW. Uh, Maiden Gully uh, this afternoon. Uh, um... I'll go through the final scores uh, in that game. Uh, New beats bet to uh, YCW Maiden Gully. Jock, where's... Uh, well, I'll talk to you a moment about where Maiden Gully, YCW Maiden Gully are at at the moment. Um, 8 1462 to 8-6-54. So uh, 8 1462 to 8 I'm surprised at uh, Maiden Gully YCW. Um, you mentioned that you spoke to the coach. Uh, before the season, and they were going with a youth policy, and that basically means you've got no money uh, normally, Jock, in country footy, um, that we're going to rely on youth. But are you a bit surprised? We've gone out to Maiden Gully, and I would have thought they're just building, building, building momentum. So would I. Everybody spoke about them as, as a real uh, prospect to come into the Bendigo Football League in five or six sure. years' time. But they haven't just gone a bit backwards. The absolute bottom's fallen out of them. Yeah. Absolute bottom's fallen out of them. Um, players left willy-nilly at the end of the season, so I don't know that that that, that suggests that there's some issues. Yes. To uh, me. You did ask a question before about goal kickers. I can give you some goal kickers from Golden Square. Burke has kicked 10, oh, and Joel Brett has kicked 6. So Joel Brett has kicked a number of goals already, so that probably just propels him a bit now, further. having said all that, uh, when I go back and read this uh, message I got, uh, I might uh, update my score here. Uh, New Feeds have beat YCW, as I mentioned. Also, we've got another score coming through uh, in a moment that I want to uh, double-check that it's right, so from uh, Loddon Valley Football as well. Oh, all right. <coughs> meantime, 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 back at the ramp, <laughs> we'll go to Paul Wicks, who sent through some final scores in the MCD and NFL uh, this afternoon. you like to hear them, John? Yes, I would. Have you got any game in particular that you would like to hear? Um, I'm interested in what happened at Harcourt, because I believe they did have a few hours. Mm. Well, you haven't got uh, any concerns there. Trenton this afternoon, 12-8-80, defeated Carisbrook, 11-4-70. Navarre, 16-8-104, defeated Nettie Bialaba, 10-7-67. Newstead, 24-12-136 uh, to Rovers, uh, 4-12-36. Lexton, 20-16-136, Campbell's Creek, 1-3-9. Molden 713.55, Talbot uh, 3927, Harcourt, that game you, you have interest in, Harcourt 17.15.117, Denali 69.45, and Royal Park 18.8116, Avoca 12.11.83. And I'm getting some good feedback from some other games around Central Victoria. Just that Kangaroo Flat game we had some interest in. Kangaroo Flat were inaccurate in the final term, which proved. Uh, 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 fatal, they had three bad misses. The Hawks steadied and kicked the last four goals of the game. So, um